Yeah. Yeah. So if we can get started, <laughs> please. Um, six comes rolling. So this is the odd setup for us. This is the library township board meeting simultaneously. There's a uh, township meeting. Uh, we'll get started on this side. In a couple, we have various recordings going on. If we could have everybody identify themselves, starting with um, Larry during the first year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Larry Ostrowski, uh, director of White Lake Township Library. Karen Burkholz. Rich McGlue, uh, secretary of the library board. Uh, Glenn Rosso, president of the board for two years. Joe Fennell, treasurer of the library board. Denise Stefanik, assistant director. Jen Schultz, vice president of the library board. Okay. Um, Start on this side. Why not? Yeah. Rick Kowal, White Lake Township Supervisor. I'm um, Mike Roman, White Lake Township Treasurer. Mike Powell, White Lake Township Trustee. Terry Lilly, White Lake Township Clerk. Liz Smith, White Lake Township Trustee and Library Board Liaison. Scott Rollins, White Lake Township Trustee. Andrew Voorhees, White Lake Township Trustee. Okay, the agenda tonight is pretty short from our side. Uh, we'll take any public comments for the library uh, meeting and then it's a special meeting for a presentation by the township for the plans for the property that they require. So that's the agenda. Okay. <coughs> so we'll take public comments or actually, are you guys, you need to start your meeting? You know, I, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Okay. We need a roll call. Our formal introduction would take place of our roll. Okay. Do a roll call, Mr. Clerk. He already did that. He already did that. Pause. I beg your pardon. I am here. We'll take that. Okay. Okay. So you guys are good. Yeah. We're good. So um, we'll take comments from the public. Um, two minutes per person. Is there any comments from anyone? So I saw his hand go up first. Please identify yourself. Yeah. Sure. Uh, my name's Irving Shapiro, uh, and uh, I live on Wayne Road, Grass Lake, and I'm a relatively new occupant of uh, White Lake. Uh, I lived in Bloomfield Township, retired after many years in hospital administration, and uh, loved the lake. Uh, a friend of mine lived on White Lake, and so I was introduced to it. And I have to say that uh, I love all the services that exist in White Lake Township. I have a German short hair pointer. I go to Bloomer Park every day and allow her to run. <coughs> Island with Silo, also the services that exist, as well as the library. It's my understanding that uh, uh, there was a bond uh, event that took place and that there is to be a new library and I think $8 million was voted. Uh, I observed that the vote was, was not an approbation. It was only one by two votes. Um, to me, that represented that the public expected judgment and consideration in the way that that construction take place. Having been in the hospital field my whole <coughs> career, I ended as the president of Sinai Hospital in Detroit. And one of the things that I always observed and that was sacrificial was, was space. Every physician that I ever dealt with thought not about employees, but how much space could they have. And they were jealous. Everyone was always arguing for more space. I'd like to suggest that the construction that's going to be taking place with the township, that the library become part of that campus. To me, the flexibility that would exist, we just learned that Ford Motor is going to terminate 10,000 <coughs> middle managers. Mm -hmm. We understand that <coughs> things could change, <coughs> things that we can't even anticipate. It would seem to me that consolidation of space would have a savings in terms of design, operations, and the most important thing is flexibility. So from my perspective, I'd like to offer that as an observation, having spent many, many years, uh, some 40 years in administration, um, and to the extent that, uh, that 
that that is consideration for you. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have, I have a question. Peter Pinchinato, 8771 Townsend Drive. Uh, last month at the April Township Board meeting, I overheard that the land was already <coughs> purchased for the library. Is that a true statement? So while we don't normally answer questions, yeah. Um, yes, it's true. It was reported um, well, that we, we purchased our property before the township bought theirs. Well, the question I have is there's three millages <coughs> out there that are for the current library. So where did the library board get the money to purchase the land? So there was a bond issue as referred to. That starts August of this year. Correct. So where's the money though that came to purchase that land? The bond hasn't started. That's correct. So where did the money come from to purchase the land? The, the, so in the, um, in the vote, it stated that the bonds would be floated July of this year. So they, they have not been sourced but it was approved for issuance July 2017. Okay, but the land has been purchased. That means you've already had some money to buy the land. Where does the money come from? That's all I'm asking. Oh, so the library, I mean, we operate on a 12-month budget. Right. And so we've secured the land, and we just need to be, it will be then replenished. When at, the at, bond, interest, at interest? When the bond is issued, mm -hmm into our fund. Will it be paid back in interest? Paid back in interest. Well, you, you said you borrowed from the current. No, mortgages. no, no, no. It, it's, it's, it, it's in our checking account. It's so, the, we have a, so when you pay your property taxes, right. we get a, all of our money in January, right. hypothetically. Some of it's December, some of it's February, in January. Mm -hmm. We have that amount of money to spend over the year. For the current operations? Correct. Not for a new library? Correct. Okay, so how was that money used to purchase the land? <laughs> I, I guess I don't understand. I, I don't understand what you're asking. Well, where did we, you we bought this property, it's secured and paid for it. Thank you. But where did the money come from? That's all I'm asking. You have the current millage that's for the current library, not for the new. The bond doesn't start until July. So you had no money to buy the land yet. Fund balance. We had fund balance. Fund balance for the current library, for the current library fund. No, no. Uh, I guess I just, I'm having a struggle with this. Okay. I apologize for your struggle. Anybody else? Okay, so um, with that, we close public comments. On May 7th, I issued an email to Rick asking for um, a you know, the layout of what your proposed property is, the size of the building. You know the current future sizes what type of building uh, the cost of the new facility how is it going to be financed uh, what's the anticipated cost savings um, if we were to participate um, any additional benefits that you guys saw your timeline and if there's any other phase development i outlined 30 minutes i don't know if it's you know, more or less i don't really care but that was the expectation for us. And then a side note was uh, back to Mike, and maybe I got it wrong, person, as far as what specific items are needed from us to facilitate floating on the bond. So with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. Okay, well with this what I'll do is I'll lead off with me with a, a slight uh, description of what the concept is at this time. And after that, we'll have a public comment so that we can answer those questions from the board end. Um, what I have for you is a very, 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 very conceptual idea. And part of the idea came up when you purchase property, one of the things that you need to do is due diligence. And that is that you have to make sure that the property is adequate to meet your needs. We're very fortunate enough that after that, we found out that indeed it'll work for the township's needs. First and foremost, though, I would like to thank every township library board member, each and every one of you, each one of you particularly, and every one of your supporters, because essentially you've been a catalyst, and you're a catalyst and a spearhead to move this township forward. There's a period of time with prior administrations that there wasn't much movement or activity in moving in a positive direction. And frankly, folks, you guys didn't get up and off your took us and get moving, it probably wouldn't have happened.
So for that, I say thank you very much, and I appreciate that. And I know the board members appreciate it because you were a catalyst to motivate the board and myself <clears throat> to move forward to do as much as we could to move the, into a community for a civic center. You know, the library is near and dear to me as much as some people may think it's not because my mother, and many of you, many of you knew her, was an avid bookworm. Okay, and uh, she was a, a good supporter of it. And uh, when she's pa passed, we made some things and contributions to the library, and we'll continue in the future to support the library as such because you have to have an early learning center. This is all part of the whole program. We live in a different kind of world. Mr. Shapiro just informed us of 10,000 10, or some yeah. outstanding number of middle management people are going to be laid off. It's a very competitive, competitive world. That's why it's so important for our children to have an edge. Whatever edge we can have, and if we can give that to them here in White Lake Township, we're ahead of the game, folks, because this is all we have to build the tomorrows. So it's very important that we have that. So in the memory of my mom, I, would, I want to acknowledge my support of my entire family and coming all the way from myself and my brother and my sister-in-law and my wife and all our members that we are in support of a new library. You know, one of the things here is that you know, we all grew up in a little different town here over the years. And the days of Kelly's cows and cornfields are long gone, okay? And we're moving forward. So the decisions we make, that we make today will affect the future for years and years to come. You know, our, our identity was basically a farming community. We started out that way. You know, uh, the people that pioneered this land busted the fields. And in every farm that you go around in the communities, and I happen to have property up on Porter Road, you go along the fence lines and you'll find all the cobblestones. And each one of those cobblestones was removed by hand. And one of the things that happened was is that people took all that time to clear those fields to grow those crops and create a future here in this community. And we took every product that was, made, that was grown here, all our grains and such, and some of you heard this before, and they, we all went to the municipalities that had a grain elevator, and the grain elevator is what identified those communities. Milford, Lake Orion, Springfield Township, Holly, all around. Because from the grain elevator came the hardware store, came the dentist barbershop, came this, came that, came the community. And we have no sense of community in the sense of a hub of a wheel. So this opportunity that's before us is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So we need to take and take a good look at what we can do to make that and get the best out of it. So it's our turn to create a new tomorrow. And since the purchase <coughs> of the land it's time to sit down and think what's the best use of all that land that we've been able to acquire. You know, the library's been able to acquire about seven acres through Liz's diligent efforts to make it work. I was able to acquire approximately 26, okay? So we have a significant campus right now. The question is, what do we do with it? Now, the, the library's made great efforts and great strides to move forward. And again, you're saluted <coughs> for that but there's not been one drop of cement been poured yet into a trench. We have to look at what's gonna be beneficial for everybody to come. You know, so that's, that's what's very important. So one of the things, as I get through my notes, excuse me, that I wanna to bring to you is, is, you know, what are the following communities have in common? City of Liburn, Georgia, City of East Grand Rapids, Michigan, City of Escanaba, Michigan, Springfield Township, Michigan, City of Warren, Michigan, and City of Cosmos, Nebraska. I, I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> they all have conjoined library slash township city offices. And this is done for economies of scale, and they're all very successful. And that's just a handful of them. It's a national trend. <coughs> to combine facilities, whether it's police and fire, which is my intention to do here in White Lake, and it's my thought to try to combine the two, the library and the, and the White Lake Township City Offices, Township Offices. <clears throat> this will assure the perpetuity 
of the township and the township library. You know, the mentioned communities above assure that their library's future is a good, solid footing because in the event of the economic downturn, upturn, downturn, and we have all seen them all, and we will all see them again. In your lifetime, you've seen highs and you've seen lows. There's not a single person here that can't tell me they have okay? If you're in the same physical space, the only thing you're going to need to really worry about, folks, is keeping the lights on and the heat on because you've got four walls around you that are going to be used by, other, by another source, another community, <coughs> part of the community. And that's what's important. Excuse me, important. <clears throat> so that one sure the library's future and the evolution of the next generation and beyond. You know, we have an obligation to the residents and the taxpayers, you know, to deliver the most bang for the buck. They don't mind paying the bill sometimes, but I know they want to get the best value that they can. I know I do. I'm going to be paying taxes on this. I don't have a problem supporting it. But I want to make sure that we do the right thing. And the right thing for our kids and our grandkids and the future beyond. So, some of the different things are, you know, in my 40 years, I've learned a lot of things about contracting and the stuff that I've built. I've built smaller buildings, I've built bigger buildings. I've built buildings bigger than this library. I could put two libraries inside some of <coughs> the buildings that, th that they're proposing. And one of the things I learned is economy of scale. Okay. <coughs> it costs less to build it from a material standpoint. It costs less to heat it. It costs less to cool it. It costs less to maintain the facilities. It costs less to <clears throat> in more ways than you can imagine. Cutting the grass, shoveling the snow, paving the parking lot, fixing your roof when it does leak, because it will <clears throat> at some point in the future. So, those are the types of things that are very, very important. And that's why it makes a whole heck of a lot more economic sense to take and look at this, at least entertain the opportunity to put this as a combined physical facility. The dynamics of this whole thing have changed with the purchase of this property. Since we've purchased the property, now we need to take and take a step back and look at it and see what is going to be in the best interest of the community and that the community gets the most for their money. So, I think the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. Now, some of the questions that you proposed to me, of course, you know, we only had a two-week gain on you on closing on it, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to run through the whole gambit. But how big? That's what this meeting is going to partial, partially decide. Okay. How much is it going to cost? I got some rough numbers based on what I'm going to share with you today. So I'll give you that. When? I like to see a bond issue no later than 5, uh, 15, July, in, in, uh, 17. So that would put us, excuse me, I beg your pardon, next year. So that would give us time to get all of our ducks in a row, have some community input, and what I'd like to propose to do is I would like to propose to create a committee. And that committee would consist of two library members, whether elected or not, two township members, board members, fire chief, police chief, city planner, and a planning consultant that we would select. And these people can look at this from outside the box. They can tell us where we're going, what our future is, and what we're going to do. I've done a lot of this stuff. I've seen a lot of different things come across my desk. I've built a myriad of projects. I don't have all the answers. And a man been born, or a woman been born, that has all the answers. Sometimes you need to go to outside sources to try to get that look. That, that third eye out there looking in sometimes will give you the insight into something that maybe you're overlooking. Maybe it's something you're just not following totally on because you're focused, you're snow blind, you got your blinders on, you're looking at what you're doing here. So sometimes it's better to have a little bit of outside input. <clears throat> One of the things that we did was during the process is we, uh, we consulted an architect for some conceptual drawings. And those conceptual drawings are just that. That's the key word here, conceptual. And the conceptual drawings will give us a building <clears throat> It'll look a little bit potentially like wrong one. Like this.
This particular building is kind of a U-shaped building. I'll show you the floor plan in a moment. This building has approximately uh, three, has three levels, and one of the great levels there that I thought would, personally thought, but maybe not, would be a great location for the library, would be the entire expanse of lower level. Now this particular building, I got nowhere to go. This particular building, uh, it has a lower level, first lower level of approximately 21,000 square feet, okay? Can it be bigger? Sure. But it's a starting point. It's a concept. And I'll trade you guys views because when you're sitting there where this is located, you have the prettiest view of the most natural area. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And we were able to secure a deal to take our property all the way to the center of the stream bed, which gives us a large parkland area behind there. If you were to take a sound meter over there, and I was looking around for one today, I will guarantee you the decibels from the traffic noise and all the other day-to-day -day noise are significantly less in that location than they are in the other location. And it's just where it is. It's just, just a fact of the matter. So the hill has about a 10 and a half to 11 foot roll off, makes a perfect walkout. Soil borings came back perfect, <coughs> soil conditions are great. So it's a, it's a natural location for that kind of facility. This is just a concept. Notice all the field stone. Remember I said about field stone on the farmlands, okay? So in theory, you could go through the first floor, go through a lobby, which would be a, a grand lobby, and I beg your pardon. And again, conceptual. This particular would allow us a grand lobby to come in. We'd have a little coffee shop here because a sense of community is extremely important. People like to be able to come someplace and sit and talk and, and get together. And as we see this, the people are drawn to this. We're drawn to the walkable communities. More and more of what makes a community is the hub of the wheel. And this would end up being the hub of the wheel. And this particular drawing, which is concept again only, would be to come through here in the grand auditor atrium area, come through here and go to his balcony, and there would be pods in here for reading areas, and then you could go either down the elevator to the library, down the grand staircase to the library, or in through one of the two outside separate entrances to the library, which would be done by the topography of the land, and would be determined by an architect and an engineer, not by me, okay? And the design of the group of the library. That's a 21,000 plus this air level up here of about 1,400 feet square feet. So you're around 23, 24,000 square feet at this current design. And this isn't necessarily the design, it's the concept. But you guys got the best view in the house. You got the best location, the best view, the best area to be able to do an outside amphitheater, do a walkable pass, do a little playground area in a very protected area away from the cars, away from the traffic, and in a very private area for the, for the young people to be around. This would all come down through the staircase into the lower level, which would walk out. This would be the walkout lower level on the back side to a rotunda. And this rotunda could allow a beautiful area to gather and read. And also, a, it was in my thought process to have a fireplace down there so that you had a great area. You grab a cup of coffee, you go downstairs, you sit down there, and sit around a beautiful fireplace and look out at this absolutely wondrous view. And it's all glass. And I invite each and every one of you, and you won't be trespassing because the township owns property now, to uh, venture out there and see how, what a beautiful piece it is. And it's an absolute wonderful, wonderful piece. So that's an opportunity that I think shouldn't be passed up. And we have... The final drawing, which is essentially taking us to, or not final, <clears throat> that would be, this would be the third floor of the building, so to speak, and it's built into a roof truss system. With a roof truss system, you can recoup your floor space at only about 50% of the cost, 50 to 60% of the cost, because if you use an engineered truss with a maximum span of 60 feet, 
it allows the community that when I'm dead gone in worm food, okay, and somebody comes along and decides to either change the library or change the township hall, they can move those petitions around anywhere they want. There's no load bearing walls. It's all free span. So from an engineering standpoint, it's a very, very practical way to go. It allows for the growth of the future and planning of tomorrow. So that's really important. This is the third, loft, third floor loft area. Potentially a lot of growth up here in the future for the township. Someday I'd like to see us have a parks and rec department. We're not there yet where we have an official one, but one day we may be as we grow. And what other amenities come along? whether it's services for our seniors or services for our citizens. It really is just a matter, it allows us the time and opportunity. <coughs> this is a uh, depiction of the entire lower level, which is tw over 21,000 square feet. That is a sizable area for an absolutely wonderful Beautiful walkout view all the way through here on this side. Now I did see a rough kind of concept sketch of some of the building of the building that they're currently proposing, just kind of a finger sketch. And some of your little jaunts that shot off just happen to be about 60 feet wide. So you've got a similar type of scale that you have with the potential design. But this is just a concept. <clears throat> if the boards can sit down together through a combination of this proposed committee I'm um, suggesting, I think we could come up as a community with a wonderful, wonderful idea. This is just something to give the public to have an idea that we want to move forward and to make sure that it was feasible to put on that land. The topography lends itself to this type of design. It makes economic sense and it ensures the perpetuity of the library for years and years to come. So, that is pretty much what I have to say about it. I won't show you the roof diagram because it's kind of crazy. And then this, for all the folks that don't know exactly what the township has purchased or has seen it, is a drawing, engineer drawing, of the parcel that we purchased, roughly 26.07 acres. And we've also purchased, in part of our negotiations, we negotiated an easement 60 feet wide I'm not quite sure exactly how long, like 450 or 550 feet in length, something like that, all the way down to Oxbow Lake. So now we're going to have a place. Brendel, thank you. Excuse me, that would have been a long walk <laughs> to, uh, to Brendel Lake. So that will allow us to have the ability to enjoy that lake and be able to go down there and, you know, maybe build a gazebo down there. We'll, we'll name it after somebody in the township I won't mention right now. But... Uh, <clears throat> that's another opportunity and this will allow us to create you know what we've passed and, and done in the past and we try to do is create money for a trail system we've got an absolutely fabulous 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 opportunity here to create a trail system and there's much more to this that I'm working on in my mind's eye as I've designed and go through this because there are other means and mechanisms to bring more people into that area so this is just, again, concept design, a starting point, somewhere that we can all work from, potentially. There's no perfect plan, but you have to have some vision, and you have to have some direction in order to make things work for everybody. And it's most important to me that if we do have an economic job, <coughs> that we can depend upon each other to keep each other bolstered up and make sure that we have longevity. I don't have to be the grand architect of this, per se, but I think it's something that we all need to look at and we have to look at for the future and for our children and our grandchildren and where <coughs> we want our township to go and where we want it to be in 25, 35, 45, 50 years from now. We're sitting in a building that was built in 1930 something over there and we've been there that long, so I think we got our use out of it. So with that, I would like to turn over to some of my board members for their comments, and after that, I will ask for public comment. Mr. Roman? No, thanks, Ray. <clears throat> uh, wow, I think you said it all, but uh, yeah, I, um, I mean, I, I kind of look at our constituency here, and it seems like in November we get right around 12,000 voters. 
which to me means that about 7,000 of those voters did not even vote in the primary election, which passed this bond issue. Um, I see these people every day. They come to pay their taxes. They come in for dog licenses. They come in for passports. And many are on fixed income. I feel that I owe it to, uh, to all of our residents to, to not only give them an incredible library, but as Mr. Kowal said, to do it in as economically feasible, um, in a most economically feasible manner. Um, myself, many of the township employees, um, I know for a fact will use that library more if it was combined. Um, whether it's eating your quick lunch and wanting to grab a book and sit down and read or whatever. Um, I know the people coming to my counter, some of them, uh, many of them I feel that are not using a library will, would be more apt to visit. So I think you're going to get more, you would get definitely get more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Put traffic faster. More traffic uh, uh, with the combination. Um, to share roads, to share utility lines, to share roofs, to share parking, uh, to share walls. Um, I think, Rick, you mentioned possibly saving uh, somewhere between two and four million dollars. Yes. I mean, I just hope that the library, if that savings is possible, that um, you would consider the option of combining. So, um, thanks, Rick. Yeah, that particular building right there, I can build that building that you saw those sketches of for about 12 to 14 million dollars in its entirety. It doesn't count any furniture, but that would be the budget of that particular building. So if you were to take the 21,000 square feet and deduct that out, pro rata, do some calculations, it would mean a significant saving for the library. And not that they would necessarily be bound to not spend that money, but what it would do, it would allow you an opportunity, A, to buy the best possible technology to put into that library. And that's what would be a real enhancement to our community. If not only we had the physical building, but if we had the best possible technology. And again, that's getting the most bang for the buck. Mr. Powell. Uh, thank you, Rick, and thank you, board members. Uh, ever since I knew that um, uh, the library had a millage there uh, before the public and it, and it passed, even though it just passed by a couple votes, um, I had been um, inundated by residents uh, concerned about uh, uh, the cost of the standalone library. Um, I just uh, came from a meeting in West Bloomfield Township with their supervisor and a, a very large developer in West Bloomfield Township. Um, we were looking at the um, uh, zoning ordinance, and the zoning ordinance uh, requires that uh, each, uh, each site has, uh, meets the requirements of parking and uh, landscaping and all the requirements of each and every site. Um, the client I represent uh, has uh, two hotels and uh, restaurants and commercial centers on the same site. And the concern from uh, my client's standpoint was that the zoning ordinance required uh, the developer to look at each building independently. <clears throat> and we tried very hard to convince the uh, township supervisor and the planning director <coughs> that because of the diversity of use, there could be a great deal of savings. Instead of having to have uh, 350 parking spaces in order to uh, serve the development, you really only needed 175 parking spaces. So you saved on all of that in the landscaping size of size of parcel and everything else. So uh, um, I, I, I'm forced into my occupation to look at it in a very efficient way uh, to meet the, all the requirements, but still provide the services to the local community and or the developer. A number of years ago, uh, the state of Michigan actually um, uh, passed a, uh, an act that uh, rewarded communities for sharing services. And it was their goal to uh, uh, provide grants to communities that would uh, share um, uh, library space, share uh, park space, share police and fire as a, as a means of saving the residents' money. Um, 
And uh, I took that to heart and really felt that uh, we should reach out to the surrounding communities <coughs> to uh, share in services. Um, and with that in mind, I, I, I just couldn't help that there's some, to feel that there's something wrong when within the same community, we couldn't reach out and share services back and forth between different entities in the same uh, uh, community. Hence, um, I'm in total favor of police and fire sharing a building, uh, separate facilities maybe, but the same building, so that the uh, meeting places that are not rarely used at the same time could be shared. Um, and I very much believe that uh, there could be a major cost savings and uh, not a waste of space, a uh, much more efficient use of space if we were to do something combined between the library board and the township uh, uh, board. Um, the um, not only the saving of parking but uh, the same meeting places uh, can be used the township board uh, room can be a meeting place for the uh, library uh, rarely would they be done at exactly the same time and the the, um, the um, smaller uh, reading rooms the smaller activities uh, maybe the uh, uh, the lunch areas uh, kitchen areas all of those things can be shared instead of each of us having something totally independent um, it just makes total sense. Um, I have um, reached out to uh, many of the residents and uh, they totally believe that that would be the right approach. If we're going to have new buildings, then we ought to combine them into one building for the sake of efficiency. So uh, I, I, for one, am certainly willing to and help work back and forth between the library board and uh, the White Lake Township board and the residents to try to make uh, the best use of the property, best use of the building, the most efficient. And um, uh, something happened, um, uh, let me just say uh, 10, 15 years ago, maybe more, I lose track of time the older I get. Um, the uh, Huron Valley School <coughs> System put a vote before the people for upgrading the schools and uh, creating um, uh, swimming pools in each of the high schools. <coughs> and. Uh, they uh, were able to build the swimming pools and then they found out, oh my, we don't have enough money to operate those swimming pools and so uh, we need more money. And uh, what a shame that would be if we had two separate buildings and uh, we each had the same maintenance fees, the same electric fees, the same all of that maintenance and, um, and we couldn't work together to be able to be a little more efficient. So that's what I'm actually uh, hoping that we can do together um, to put our heads together and come up with a, a very, very great scheme to, uh, to work together. So thank you. Mr. Lilly. Thanks, Rick. Um, just like the first thing I'd like to say is excellent presentation. Um, to most of you and maybe some of the newer people, this concept of uh, the Wade Lake Township looking for property, particularly in the same area that we were able to finally purchase, is not a new concept. This concept started uh, back in the 90s and uh, it was always the dream even back in the 90s when this uh, first came about that uh, we would uh, purchase enough property in that area to uh, build a campus and not individual buildings like we have today. My question isn't particularly and I know uh, Rick laid out a concept and probably seen some people on the other side of the aisle holding your breath about the basement but I don't think we're as concerned about <coughs> the fact of what you folks as a library really want, whether you want on one floor, or whether you want it two floors, or a basement concept like you have now, or whatever. Not too concerned about that. Um, I think the economics mm -hmm. of looking at prices for both of those are gonna tell the true story. Um, I think the concept, uh, and we never did discuss the senior center, but I think uh, Part of the uh, plan should be for uh, White Lake Township is to consider the senior center on one wing of our building and a library on the other wing. We, we've talked in the past that other organizations that uh, are really part of White Lake Township, uh, the Business Association, possibility of post office, Chamber of Commerce, and the Historical Society, all of those groups are in need for some type of a space, if, even if it's an office. And I think uh, the plan that Rick uh, presented, particularly with taking advantage of the basement area, is an ideal opportunity for us that uh, uh, we could take advantage of those uh, 
facilities and the uses of those, uh, those can change over time and gives us enough flexibility that we don't have to, in the next five or ten years, necessarily add on to the building. I'm not concerned about the, what, what the voters voted for you. The voters decided in the election that you were going to have a library. But the thing that has never been discussed like we're doing today is a joint effort of putting our heads together to say we're going to build a library and when we're going to build it. And I think, again, with Rick's presentation, with the economics, looking at all those avenues, and I think it even goes beyond that, that we've talked about even the uh, kind of a scenic scape going down Elizabeth Lake Road, uh, looking at other options uh, for the township, that this becomes part of the whole plan and not bits and pieces that uh, we're going to say today we want this and tomorrow we want that, whatever, even though that the project could be phased. In the meeting that we had with a, a couple of library board members, I think Rick uh, indicated as he has today that um, we did not want to stop the process of the library and the library building going forward. But I did hear him indicate we need to slow down a little bit and take advantage of some opportunities, particularly through the planning process, in order to make this the best plan for the people of Whaley Township. Um, I think the other thing that was mentioned was the share parking, and, and I know we share parking now, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the shared parking we have now. There certainly can be opportunities the way buildings can be designed to put parking on one side of the building or put parking in the middle of the building or possibly even if we're going to do a two-wing building to put parking on both sides for those entities that do it. But still, the project is done as a whole and the economics of building that um, are really quite a savings to the people. So again, I'd like to just, from my standpoint, I'd like you to know that this is a concept that we've thought about for a long, long time and do not hamper your ability to move forward, but let's move forward together. Thank you. Ms. Smith? So I'm in a very unique position here. As be, these are, <coughs> were my colleagues for four or five years um, as being past library board president and now the library liaison. So I, um, I know this project like the back of my hand and that nobody worked harder to secure this property than myself for the library. So, um, <coughs> We, there's a couple, a couple things I want to just clarify for the interested residents. There's some history here. Um, I think it's important that the community understands these are two totally separate boards. They are elected separately. They have separate budgets. They are not under the township's um, budget or, or board. They're, they're autonomous. Some communities are set up together where their library boards are appointed by the township board. Here in White Lake, they're completely separate boards, um, elected separately on the ballot. You vote for these um, fine folks across from us, just like you would vote from us, for us. Um, so I want to clarify that. Um, there was a subcommittee uh, this, that the library board formed in an exploratory committee looking for the building, property, ways to expand um, before the bond, before we presented the bond issue, the library board presented the bond issue to the public. Myself and former board member Pam Collins, um, Larry and Denise met with the township. We met with um, Greg, Supervisor Greg Baroni, Terry, Lily, Mike Roman, and I believe Sean was there. We presented the idea of, of that we were looking at either expanding this building or perhaps building a new library. Um, we talked to them at, at that time of what the township's plans were, and at that point in time, in January of 16, the library subcommittee was told that there was no plans for the township to build or, um, or purchase property at that time. So the library board then decided to move forward. We, we decided to take a chance because we had a lot of patrons at the time um, hoping to have a new facility. So we moved forward, and, and I just want to clarify that and give some history for, for folks that um, don't, don't know how things were set up or how, what happened before the bond was presented to the public. Um, so another thing that I, I wanted just to clarify is when the bond was 
talked about amongst the library board. It was very thoughtfully talked about. It was very, um, this board is a conscientious board. It is a fiscally responsible board. And this was given a lot of thought. The budget and the cost of the building was given a lot of thought. We did, a, that board at the time did a lot of the previous Board, library board did a lot of um, research on what it would cost to build a library of that size and what was necessary to properly serve our residents. Uh, so the Michigan Library Association tells library boards that to properly serve a, a community of our size, we need about 30,000 square feet. To put that in perspective for you, the Commerce Library is 35,000 square feet, the new library. So we decided, the library board at that time decided that we would be conservative and, and go 30,000 square feet. We have roughly 32,000 residents now in White Lake. Um, is, that, is that about right, Rick? About pushing about 32,000? 31,500, roughly. Mm -hmm. So um, with maybe perhaps, uh, you know, with growth in the future to add on to the new library. So I just want to give some history there so we're all kind of on the same page. So at that point in time is when we, we moved forward with the bond, with the library board moved forward with the bond language and it was then put on the August ballot. So a proposed 21,000 square feet is not enough for the Conceptual. Conceptual. That's strictly conceptual. Proposed wouldn't be enough to the library standards. Um, and I don't want to speak for this board. I'm just talking about in generalities that, you know, just <coughs> they kind of have a formula of what we should have to s properly serve our size township. Um, so I, I have an interesting, I'm in a unique position. I have an interesting perspective because I have a lot of intimate knowledge of how this bond issue came about. And, uh, and I, I worked hard on the YES committee. Um, so. I have a lot of information about what's happening. And so if anyone has any questions later on at the meeting, I'm happy to talk to anybody. And, and this board, is, I'm sure, is happy to um, talk to anyone afterwards as well. Uh, I, I have no issue. I'm happy to explore a joint building if that's what the library board wishes to do. Um, I think that, again, the library board was, this was very, carefully thought out. This was not a fly by night number that was come up for the bond. Um, <clears throat> so they they were conscientious in the property that they purchased and the size and um, in the hopes of perhaps having some trails or outdoor activities for our residents uh, later on after the library building was um, built. And then I'll just close by my wish for the new library has always been, and I just want to reiterate it, that um, we are properly serving the residents of White Lake, that it is the hub of our community. We don't have a community center, so I always hope that the library would bring that to White Lake. A 21st century library has many things to offer. It's not what you used to think of it. Um, we can offer meeting rooms, we can offer a safe place for kids, where it's a great location. We're off of M59 for seniors and um, uh, young folks to, dr to drive to the library. So a 21st century library can be full of technology and activities and with the proper space, um, Larry and Denise do great job programming and I think we can all agree on that. And they can do so much more. And then, of course, I've always hoped that the naysayers, because such it was such a close vote, obviously there's some naysayers, will be so pleasantly surprised that they will find something at the library for them that they didn't expect. Perhaps if it's not something in the library, perhaps it's something on the grounds of the library that we hope to offer. Um, so I, I, um, I just wanted to clarify that a couple things, that they are separate boards and as the library liaison, I hope to encourage communication between the two boards and to bridge a gap that these boards have never met like this before and they haven't talked like this before and it should have happened a long time ago. So um, I am I'm here to support the library as the liaison and uh, but I'm, I'm certainly not opposed to sharing costs if that's what the library board would like to do. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Mr. Ruggles. Uh, yeah. 
Well, thanks for having us here. It's uh, <laughs> great to, to speak openly amongst ourselves. And um, in an effort to not echo everything that's been said, um, I'm in agreement <coughs> with um, what most of everything was stated by these fine gentlemen. Um, I think that being elected officials um, on the library board, on the township board, we all have the same responsibilities and obligations to the, the residents who put us here. And one of the most important is the fiduciary <coughs> responsibility that we have to try and do what's in the best interest for them. They're not here to make these decisions. We are. Um, they approve the library, which is fantastic. And now you're tasked with decisions like uh, what to buy and where and for how much. And they trust that we will all do what is in their interest. And the biggest part of that is what we're discussing here. Um, whatever makes economic sense, I think, is in their interest. And um, moving together jointly will benefit them. And um, it's a smart way to go. It's, um, it's what we need to do. Um, I agree with... What Liz was saying, um, I, I'm uh, uh, really hoping that um, you guys will openly um, understand that and uh, excited to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ruggles. Andrea. I don't know what to say at this point because everything I had is gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, we left you last. I know. The, you're, the, you're the anchor. <coughs> um, I personally do. I feel like right now it's us versus you. Um, I actually wanted to walk in and sit over there because you guys were the library and I know us the board work. Because to me, we should work together as a community to do what's best for the for the community and the library and the township board and the taxpayers. Um, unfortunately, I was forced to sit over here. Um, but I have personal tears with you guys. I'm on to sit with you guys. <laughs> but I feel like it's us versus them. Um, but I personally have, like uh, Mr. Powell and Mr. Roman have said, they, I've talked to some of my neighbors that are avid book readers. And I will admit, some of them, even though they're avid book readers, voted no for the millage. But when I, when I had one person like roll their eyes when I said the library, so like, I knew without her saying anything that she had voted no. But with that being said, the positive and negative sides of the library would love it if we could figure out a way to do it together. So as you, being a longtime resident, but like I, my, I always kind of vote with my heart and do what's best for the community. Um, like I said, they've said anything I would, what is going to say. So those are my only thoughts. Thank you, Andrea. <clears throat> now, you know, there's a lot of talk and we're going back and forth on these different things, but the reality of it is, is that we really do need to think for tomorrow and beyond. And I would like to look at this as more of an opportunity than any type of adversarial event. We have an opportunity here. One, one shot. One time, folks. Mm -hmm. Sean Connery said, one ping and one ping only. Okay. Red October. Can you believe it? How long, Rick? Pardon? How long has this township waited for this opportunity? 18, 20 years. So maybe just a little more time, a little more patience might prevail something better out of the box than we can all possibly imagine. And there have been many people that I've met with, many, in meetings at some of the different associations and different places and had coffee and this, that, and everything. And I've had some, what I call the negative people that didn't want to do this and didn't want to do the other thing, but when I took and I presented it in a little different light, all of a sudden they had four, five, six people that saw it in a positive manner. They thought, well, maybe this isn't such a, maybe this is a, isn't a bad idea if we do it jointly. Maybe I won't be so opposed to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe those people didn't give you their vote that time around, but I'll tell you where that vote's going to be damn important is when you need an operating village, okay? And it's going to cost you less to operate in that building. <laughs> And those people that see that kind of an effort come forth from both boards will be impressed by both boards' abilities to manage something together and forge this new future. So that's very, very important. So at this, I, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to go to the public. Oh, Mr. Powell. If I could say one more thing, and uh, Liz, I appreciate very much uh, what you shared that 21,000 based upon the the specs and the uh, <coughs> government uh, studies that 21,000 is a little too small. 
Um, that leaves us uh, short by about 10,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the library needs meeting rooms, study area, and uh, conference rooms. Um, what, how strange is it that the uh, township uh, needs meeting rooms, study area, and conference rooms? What a shame it would be to have 10,000 square feet of rooms sitting empty in two different locations when they could be used at the same time or at different times during the day and, and be jointly used. So that's kind of the advantage that we have if we do something jointly. Now these are just the kind of things that where we can have our opinions and thoughts but we need to go to the professionals. Whether it's an architect or a planner, there's people that do municipal planning, there's people that do ar architectural design, libraries, everybody has their little feel. I wouldn't necessarily let the architect that's going to design my house design a 27-story skyscraper for me, okay? Both architects, both qualified, but who specializes in what? I just had some current meetings with uh, an architect regarding a joint fire and police facility. Why? Because that particular firm specializes in fire, joint fire and police facilities. So these are the type of things that we need to draw ourselves to the experts and try to find the answers. And that's the only way you're going to get it. If you don't know the answers, you surround yourself with the people that do. Mr. Lilly, you got something else to say? Just a couple additional things, and uh, Liz had mentioned. I don't think the township has any uh, uh, thought of entertaining the fact that the library board shouldn't run the library mm -hmm. or combining finances for the township with your finances. Um, she also mentioned that uh, there was no plans for any property purchases, I can tell you from the last five years, that the township has spent a lot of time, and a lot of time in the executive session, discussing property purchase, and thank goodness you were able to in put the, together a deal. In the executive session, um, sure, but it, wasn't, but it wasn't able to be shared with but, the library board at the time. But we have done that. Um, even as Rick mentioned, even if there was a common architect to build this building, and the township failed to obtain millage as quick as we would like to build the township hall facilities. This project could be phased, and it could be built with the library and then added on subsequently for the, uh, the remaining uh, township hall. The other thing is, is that we have to think about from our end, and Rick's talked about police and fire facilities and the senior center, whatever, um, and the building those all at one time that we may have to ask the citizens to do is the ability that uh, once these facilities are vacated, that we can sell the township property with the fire station sets on. <coughs> we can sell this property and recoup. So even though that we're gonna ask the taxpayers for uh, quite a bit of money in order to finance the new construction, we have the ability to pay back a lot of that upon the sale of our properties, particularly with the uh, senior center over there, even though that we may want to think about the possibility of moving our station to uh, over in that area. So there's a lot of things that we need to discuss with the general public in order to make them see the whole picture of what we want to accomplish. And I don't, there's not a person that walks into that township hall and says, boy, when are you guys going to move? And if you want a real experience to come in at election time in the clerk's office, <laughs> and say, well, ballot bags for about 30 days. So, uh, there's no question that and Rick has indicated that the future of Weight Lake um, is going to change and we need to give it a lot of thought. So thank you again. Thanks. So with that I will say I'd like to ask some folks in the audience here for some questions if you have them. Anybody have questions? And oh, I, do you guys want to come back on this and retort? Or do you want to you, come you after can, the questions? You can take your public and then we'll come back. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, just. <clears throat> Coming from a city and municipality and dealing with policing unit contracts, I don't know if anybody in the, where, the room's aware of that. Legacy costs with township employees, what, I, what concerns me is, you know, the idea of combining it would make a uh, significant savings, savings for future legacy costs down the road for the township. I mean, that's what I would was going to ask with that. So you're saying help. what we save in a building would ultimately get yeah, spent yeah, on employees works, and benefits yes. and things of that nature. That's, That's true. Identify I'm sorry, please. my name's Anthony Obo. I live at 3423 uh, Corey Creek Drive. I guess that's my question. If we're making that savings, is that going to go back into the township and the community? 
Well, in general, I would say it's hard to say exactly where the savings is ultimately going to pan out, but if it costs you less money to operate, that's less that you have to get, keep going back to the taxpayer. There's nothing like uh, what I will call um, uh, voter fatigue as far as, oh, we need another you know, 10 you know, mills or 8 mills or this. Uh, millage fatigue has killed a lot of communities. And if you have to keep going back at them, it doesn't make any sense. So you're better off to try to do one thing, do it very efficiently, okay, and hopefully you'll have a longer time between those. If there are any necessary millages required, you'll have a longer time in between them. This particular opportunity we have here is much more than the library in the Township Hall. You know, we have an opportunity here in this particular area here because of the size of parcel that we bought. We've done a little bit of homework and found that there's some area there that we may be able to resale and potentially put development in, in the downtown district, which is gonna bring more rooftops into an area, bring people into the area, more people to come into the library, more people to come in and will do business in the township hall. And in turn, hope to create, again, that hub of the wheel, and that's very important. Yes, sir. I have a question. Um, the issue was raised about uh, abandoning or these buildings would have to be sold. What's the library position for the land that you own in the event that you were to go the other question is, what's the default if the library, it is a separate board, but what's the default in the event that they can't meet their obligations to that bond issue? Who, who's accountable? Is it White Lake Township? Well, there's, there's no money. Michael can probably answer well, that. Well, as far, as far as the bond issue, it will be funded by a millage, and that millage will be determined by whatever's necessary to pay off the bond. So if our tax base doubles, the millage will fall. If the opposite happens, the millage will rise. Automatically? Without uh, <clears throat> well, the, yes, the township assessor will determine those millage rates <clears throat> to meet the demands of those bonds. Any other question? How big is this library? Beg your pardon? How big is this library? I think this yeah. is just under 10,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like 96 or 9,800, somewhere in there. So you're looking at roughly three times the size of this particular building. Could you uh, state your name for the record, please? Uh, Aaron Greenblatt, 9055 here on Bluff Stride. And to give you an idea, in this particular concept of a building, and again, not set in stone, it's only on paper and cardboard, the ceilings in this lower level would be over 10 feet, which is two feet higher than this, okay? So you wouldn't have a cavernous effect as far as being in a lower level. And it has a western exposure uh, that would put a tremendous amount of light past, past noon into this area and would be would be a very nice location and frankly you know if somebody wanted to take the first floor and we got in the lower level that's fine They're a great place for my barbecue grill so i don't care you know so i'm happy yes sir um jim stevenson uh, from the spiner column um are you going to open up for questions once the library board has time to yes to comment? yeah they'll they'll do their comment i just wanted to get the direct comments on anything that these board okay. members said or that i presented that's fine Any, yes sir oh i saw it Yes, dear, your name? Diane Shanowski, 2205 Tigard Island Road. Um, I was a naysayer. I was very much against this millage that came through, <clears throat> as were most of my family, friends, everyone I've been here for many years. I am really excited to see the possibilities here in combining these services. Um, cost effective is a big thing. Um, we are retirees and we are on a fixed income. So this is gonna, this hurts us when we keep getting these millages after millages after millages. This gives me a positive feeling about what we might expect with the library and the township sharing a building. It just makes sense, and I, and I don't understand that, I don't that there would be any opposition. I think it's a win-win all the way around. So I, I hope and pray that um, together the township board and the library board can work together and make this happen. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Sharon Hills, I live on North Quarry Creek Drive, and um, I say ditto right there, totally. I've seen, I love the library. I'm a, I'm a book lover, and I use the library, and so, but I've seen so many libraries go up, and the waste of money is just, it, it irritates me. So to see a concept like this, <coughs> I just love it. I absolutely love it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, we naysayers on the library boat got a really bad rap, I think, because I don't think many of us hate the library. I think we all love it. I don't it. think anybody no, hates the library. There, there's nobody here. Yeah, no. we, yeah. What we hate yeah. is 
is being driven out of White right. Lake by the cost of living here. Right. Um, I was so impressed when I first walked into the Springfield Township Library. Yeah. I didn't realize until I walked into it that they had combined it, and yeah. I thought, what a novel idea. Why should we have separate standing buildings? Um, I think the important thing is that the two boards work together so that they, the library, in essence, ends up with what it needs. I don't want to see the library shortchanged in this, mm -hmm. like you say. Uh, you know, if you want, we get we get the lower level. You just invite us for barbecue. I'm good with it. Um, it works. I don't think it matters yeah. who's where. I think the important yeah. thing is let's get this built in a way that we can afford, mm -hmm. so exactly. you don't yep. lose people from White Lake like myself. Right. Well, that's that's part of the thought processes that, that I think the board has. Uh, I think actually both boards really feel that way. I mean, yes, dear. The she brought. I'm Stay Mary Rayner, 5995 Warren. Uh, she brought up a point with the Springfield Library. Does anybody have any idea how large that library is? Their library, I think, is... Uh, 14,000. Yeah, it's like twelve or 14,000 yeah, 14, square feet. Residents. Yeah, well utilized, probably. Well utilized, mm -hmm. and actually very successful, and mm -hmm. all the persons that I spoke with about it, some of the residents that I stopped going in and out of the door when mm -hmm. I took a little tour there, and persons that were working there also, it was very well received by the public. Now, I know there's some concerns about, you know, separation of the two boards. Well, you know what? They call it condominium, folks. Okay, it's done all over this country. You go in any national city, any, anywhere in this country, and buildings, four floors will be owned by GE. The, the, the fifth, sixth, seventh floor will be owned by Acme Holdings. The eighth floor will be held by another company. So this is nothing new. This is nothing that can't be done, okay? You know, in Europe, I mean, you go to the Parthenon, you know, in places of ancient Roman times, they had multiple things in certain buildings, okay? So it, this isn't a new concept. We're not reinventing the wheel here. We're just trying to make it go down the road straight. So any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Diane Hancock, Duffield. Um, as a resident and an architect, I see immense value to combining both buildings, also from an environmental impact. My job? Not just, on the, <laughs> <laughs> not just on the savings of the utilities and everything, but when we're planning, um, it's kind of like aging in place is the new trend in what we're doing in homes. And out in Arizona, where we're doing some projects, the communities that are drawn to the most are the ones where there is that community center. The retirement there is a place for everyone to go, and it's it's kind of like a club, and that's what this presents to the community that I think is a big benefit. Yeah, and that would be the the the, the intent. And as Mr. Lilly spoke, you know, we, we really didn't mention the senior center, but that definitely would be something that we would like to see drawn into it. And this was it was a rather short schedule of trying to get a lot of this technical stuff together to at least have something to put forth to the public so you could see it. So. That would be something we would welcome uh, immensely, and in turn, you know, that square footage may determine that the footprint, another footprint, expands someplace else and well, meets the needs of the library. The impact of the footprint makes right. sense to combine it together right. too. Yes, sir. Uh, Sheldon Greenblatt, nine zero five five Huron Bluffs Drive. Um, I'm hearing that uh, that the ownership of the building may be an important consideration because you, you mentioned it being a, a condominium type building. Who would own the building if there was any sort of an agreement, considering the boards are actually separate legal entities with separate budgets? Ultimately, the taxpayers of, of White Lake Township own the building, period, that's it. You own the town hall, you own the library, that's it. What it would be from a condominium standpoint is, is you could take and do pro rata uh, costs, so in other words, um, in 15 years or 20 years when the parking lot needs to be resurfaced, you pro rata that share between the occupants, whomever that might be. You might have, the senior center would have, a, let's just say for example, have a portion of it, the library would have a portion of it, and a township would have a portion of it, pro rata, based on square footage of occupancy. And that would be how all the costs would be spared across. Now, metering utilities is easy. Throw in another gas meter, throw in another CT cabinet. You're good to go, okay. So those are easy to determine, okay. But the other costs, you know, maintenance on the building, you know, the maintenance on the grounds, snow removal, <coughs> lawn care. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on, okay. You know, it's it just all those things could be pro rata and it would be much, much more cost effective. You could have, you know, one lawn company versus two, one snow removal, or our own township doing it. You know, it just, there's, there's far too many advantages 
over the disadvantages if you sit down and figure the economics of it. So you're suggesting a condominium type development for this particular structure? Correct. Concept. Okay, concept. Okay. <coughs> and how would how would other jurisdictional matters be taken uh, taken regarding into regarding the fact that you've got two boards mm -hmm. in the same building, um, each one has their own particular uh, <coughs> jurisdiction, I guess. Um, I think this building is owned by the library. The building is owned by the library. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the land underneath it is owned by the township, is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are there any historical issues with regard to the establishment of the two boards that are going to have to be ironed out that we should be aware of? I can't answer that question, okay, because I have to look into it. I know that they're autonomous, but it doesn't mean they can't be conjoined in ownership because you're standing in a perfect example of it right now, folks. Mm -hmm. You're already in it. So they're already in the condo mode, okay? So we're already in this mode. We're just going to reshape it. We'll stack it on top or stack it below, one way or the other, or next to it. So you're suggesting that the library board, if they agree with your proposal, would really not be losing anything as far as... I think they as would be gaining... As far as your position is concerned? No, they still have their autonomy. They're still what they are. What they do in their four walls, as I'll say, is their business. I have no interest as a supervisor, and I don't think the board does either, mm -hmm. of trying to, to, to regulate or operate the library. It's not what I do, okay? They do a fine job of what they do. And a perfect example of their dedication to it is the fact that they were able to rally people to support it and get this millage passed. That's an attribute. And I think that's what we need and have, again, conjoined a thought process. Take all that energy and move forward. Use the positive energy. Make it all work. Rick, an operating agreement could be put together. Operating too. just like so. any other commercial application. I did a building, I built a building in Rochester, <clears throat> over 60,000 square feet. First floor was all commercial, the second and third floor was 15 condominium units. So we had an operational agreement, split the whole thing up every which way. Everybody knew who was doing what, right down to who was sweeping the parking lot. So it's all, it's all doable. It just takes time and thought process. Yes, dear. I'm Karen Law and I'm on Duffield 3332 and um, a senior, of course. And I, I think that this is such a great idea. The one thing that White Lake doesn't seem to have is a center. Right. You know, you have to go here for this, here for that, there for there. And it, a lot of that is because, you know, if you're on White Lake, that's your center. If you're on Brendel, that's your center. We need a center. We need a downtown. And I think that this is just a brilliant idea. And if everything was in the same building, one stop purpose, shopping. I wouldn't have to go outside to go from one building to another. There you go. And that was a concern I had from other people. Out or it's zero yeah. out in blowing. February, yeah. six o'clock at night, <coughs> 20 mile an hour wind out of the southwest. <laughs> Yeah, gotcha. And that's also another consideration. You know, one of the things we wanted to try to consider on this building, or a building, is a port of cassure. So when people pull up to it, especially our older folks, they're out of the weather. They can pull up, they got a place to get out of their car, somebody can park it. We even have, Billy, we can put, we could do so many things in this facility combined. We could do fundraisers, we could do weddings. We, the, the list is endless. We could invite the historical society into part of this building. I mean, we are where we came from. Why don't we broadcast it? What do we have out there right now to the public that shows where we came from? Yes, we have to go down to the Fisk Farm, but that's not totally convenient. I think it's a great facility, but it's underutilized. But if we have built it's part of that into our... Things here. Exactly. These are all things we can work into. It. It's, it's, it's really endless. It's really endless as to what can be done. Yes, sir. Does anyone look into the... Pros? Name again? Aaron Greenblatt. Okay. Does anyone look into the pros of why it would be better to keep them separate? You, you listed different libraries and different cities that have combined them. Mm -hmm. Look at something like Southfield. They built a new library, and they chose to keep it separate for some reason. Um, they <coughs> took it out of the Southfield Pavilion. Does anyone know why they did that? I mean, is there, I mean, there has to be a reason for that. So should we also look at ones that have kept them separate and determine why they did that, just so we could avoid something or uh, incorporate something to look into that? Versus just saying, okay, these ones did and they had all these wonderful benefits. Okay, why do these ones choose to go that route? Well, most of them chose to go the route that we're talking about for economies of scale. 
and longevity. Okay, and that's what that's you're going to see. And most of the libraries that I mentioned are not that aren't terribly old. And there's oodles more throughout right. the yeah, nation. I've seen they're moving. Uh, they're moving. You're seeing more of them built combinedly in city services all the way around. You know, fire, police, but libraries. Why would home. you do the no. alternative? Why would Southfield do that? I can't answer that question. Okay, shouldn't somebody look into why they went that route? Yeah, that might There's be an opportunity balance. that we would look at through the planning process. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Jim Chanowski, 2205, Tegardine. Or may I address the board members, please? Sure, board absolutely. Yeah. Are all you members here residents of White Lake Township? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm just asking that question. Yeah. I was a naysayer for the proposal, and I would like to say that it should not have been put in in the August ordeal for the vote. It should have been put in for the November. Due to the fact less residents were voting in July or August, you would have more residents voting in the November election to get more of a community township approval of such a good facility or so. And I appreciate what Rick is doing right now, and I thank you members for being here to listen to us. But I would propose Rick's idea of a large building combining everybody in it to save the township a whole lot of money, and the residents too. Thank you. Okay, anybody else before I? No. I mean, just no. curious. Mr. Noble? Yeah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> the amount of people, do you, do you feel that the foot traffic would be for the library board? Uh, do you feel that right now would it increase in foot traffic if we combine? Well, uh, I, I believe it would. I know that it would be a great place to get away. For me, for example, there's times I need to get away from it all. I'd love to go grab a book and go sit in a corner and have a cup of coffee for 10 minutes where I could you know, have my time. And I'm certain that people that have been in that off that uh, Township Hall, I'll bet you there's people that have been in that Township Hall that have never set foot over here. I'll, I'll lay money on it. And if it's in one building, it'll start to feed on itself and as people see what the, uh, the library has to offer for all levels of its residents, from our young readers all the way up to the adults and all the different things that go on, I firmly believe that you're going to see that, uh, a, a, an interest that's going to grow. I think it'll actually help support it and feed it, especially if we put the f senior center in there because now you got kind of a captive audience in respect, respect okay? <laughs> so if, think about it because they're going to want to take, take advantage of that. So. It, it's really something that needs to take and be th talked about and considered. And also, I'd like to thank the library board too for serving. And you know, a lot of times you don't get people don't get credit for doing public service. So, oh, it's kind of a thankless job, I know. So, but but it is what it is. Yes, dear. Name again. Uh, Mary Rayner uh, Ormond Road, okay. and I am not an a sayer. Okay. I was all for this. I use the library extensively, and it's full all the time. Um, this is a good, a good idea combining it. As long as the library doesn't become the step redheaded stepchild of the group, uh, no, they I, need to yeah, be yeah, addressed yeah. on an equal footing. Mm -hmm. And the funds that they procured and got this ball rolling when you weren't interested yeah. in listening to them. Oh, that wasn't me, dear. <laughs> that wasn't me. I, I got a bunch of people who will attest to that. It wasn't me. <laughs> so. But they need to be in no. included and as an active part yes. of the decision making. Absolutely. Otherwise, you're not serving voters that voted for it. You are correct. And the monies that is earmarked from the bond by law, by law, are required to be spent on the yeah. library, period. Okay, so that, you know, in a sense, I mean, if you have a conjoined facility, that money is prorated, so to speak. But that's all for the people, the architects and planners and people like that figure all that math out. And they do it on a daily basis with other projects. <coughs> so, again, we're not inventing anything new here. But, again, the whole idea of this is the perpetuity of the library. And that's what's important. That's what I want to hand over to you. Yes, sir. That's the 8704 Townsend. Uh, my wife and I are, have been residents for about two and a half years. I uh, came from Canton where we lived 20 some years. We looked for an area to move to for about a year and a half. 
uh, it wasn't just to find the perfect house or the perfect neighbor. We were looking for community too. And I'll be honest, one of the negatives we had about moving to White Lake is there was no sense of community. Um, I can't tell you how many times we've driven down Elizabeth Lake Road and my wife's like, wouldn't this area be great for a community center? And, and now we have this opportunity. And so unfortunately, we only have like, 30 some acres to work with between two parcels. It would be great if it was more. So let's make the best use of that space. You know, if we can combine building and save footprint on uh, parking space and other facilities, that we can use it for more park space or, or whatever, or trail system or something. We have an opportunity here to do something nice for the community in terms of a center that attract people. Um, the library doesn't have to give up its plans. I mean, you have some ideas on how much foot space you want. That can be combined with. The, you know the township needs so it's just looking to combine and make more effective use of the space and, and the funds and any money that you save in the building goes directly back into the library so it's a win -win. thank you uh with that i'm going to turn the floor over to you and so the library it's, board. it's interesting that you found five libraries that were combined only three in michigan i didn't look real hard and you call them successful yes how do you know that's successful and how did you define it? Talk to people that work there in the brief summary and just the casual, how's it working for you? It works great. So they're doing something that we're not. It works great in uh, Springfield Township. They're very happy with it up there. Uh, Who's they? Are they the library? Are they I've talked the to a couple people, people in the township hall. I've talk, talked to citizens. Mm -hmm. So those people tend to be very happy with it. That the people at the library you talk to them i didn't talk to any particular persons of the library because i was trying to do my own homework with an unbiased touch mm -hmm. with the so, uh i'm sorry go ahead so with the the building that you laid out which was twenty thousand at the bottom twenty one thousand okay plus. twenty one thousand twenty thousand and ten thousand mm -hmm. what's the current space that the township has right now we are going to need probably ourselves probably about 30,000 square feet to go where we need to go based on the architectural study that was done by CHMP for the township about a year and a half, two years ago. They did a wants and needs study of the township hall, the senior center, the fire department, and the police department, a rather extensive one at that. Mm -hmm. And that footage that we have, plus or minus, and there's some margin for growth and so we need to look into that a little bit further and again this has been a very short window of time since we opened the door so for me to have all these answers is should is unrealistic at this time it was a simple question how much how much do you have today today right now we've got about 14,000 15,000 square feet so you want to go from 14 to 30 so you want to double your more than double your space possibly and in the plan that you showed, in this one cost-effective building, mm -hmm. that includes police and fire? No, it does not. So it's not a cost-effective building because they're not in it. There would be two buildings. There will be a separate building because of public safety reasons. Okay, so. Police and fire are a whole different animal. All right, so how many more square, f is that a part of the 30,000 that the, the No, it does not did? include the, the necessary space for the police department or for the fire department. Okay, so excluding police and fire, just this building, you're going to go for 30,000 square feet. Well, actually, we would have 21,000 square, 21, square foot footprint be identical to the libraries on this concept plan with a future space of up to, I believe that upper floor area is about 14, 15,000 square feet, so it would allow for the future growth of the township. And that space is yet to be determined how it works out because we haven't done an actual department by department study. <coughs> so you'd be looking at another millage to the taxpayers for 14 million is what you said, which is roughly the same cost per square foot as what we went out for. So you're not really any cheaper building. 14 million is that entire building. That means you two in it, with you in it. Yeah, but on a cost per square foot, it's it's about it's the, it's it's going to be similar, very similar. I mean, ours is. Architects are already trying to figure out right. how we're going to do it for 170 bucks a square foot. Yeah. So for a township hall, for a 2018 July vote, is what 
what you guys said? Well, I believe it would be 2018 August primary. Yeah. August vote. And then you're going to have to have a millage on top of that for the police and fire? There may be, if they decide to expand and go in that direction currently or in the future, if they have that option. Okay, I'm just, just so we can make an informed decision, what happens if in 18 you don't get the money? We're still sitting here with our plans drawn and ready to go, and you don't have any money. Well, if that happens, I don't believe that's the case. If you get behind and support it, with support of the people of the library and support of the people of the general township, I believe it'll be a successful endeavor. Okay? So as far as a negative of that, then I guess you at that point in time, that's when you just dust off the plans and maybe go forward. But I don't think that's going to be the case, because I firmly believe that people see the value in it. And if you were to take a poll out there and talk to more people about it, I think you really see there'll be a lot more support of the whole as a whole. And again, not in an adversarial, but in a very positive manner. I'm just, I mean, we've heard, you know, we just, this board needs to make a decision. Sure. <clears throat> and if we're just delaying for something that we will have to assess individually, if we honestly believe that your millage would pass, mm -hmm. given the fact that everybody, I mean, I've heard more naysayers admitting to it, <clears throat> fine, um, to see what we're going to do. Um, you mentioned two to three million dollars in cost savings. <clears throat> Is that to build it or to operate it? To build it. If we decided we did want a separate building, and since we are next, and you were talking about we need somebody to shovel the snow and do all that, would you guys still be willing to maybe split it? Well, it would only make sense. Okay. You know, that kind of thing in the future. Anytime, anything you can do anything that by a single source makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Because isn't the, the parking based on the square footage? Based upon proposed use, and if you can have diversity of use, if your if your biggest time of use is during the day, and the and the township's biggest use is at night, it doesn't make any sense to double the parking just because you the the numbers say so. But but we're both open during the day. Yeah, <laughs> but but that's not the big that's not the big um, um, parking requirements. The big parking requirements are at large township board meetings or 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 big events at the township hall or big events at the, at the library. The day-to-day -day operation, it's much like I was telling you, the, the hotel and the commercial centers. During the day, the commercial centers are uh, vastly used, and at night, the hotels are. But they're not <coughs> required to have the same parking at the same time. Yeah. And that's where the diversity comes in. But we have evening programming, and we're looking at having our programming area separate so we could do even more after-hour programming. So. What you're saying is, I think we're all going to be using the parking lot at the same time. But does it make sense for your big event to be the exact same night of the, of the week that the Township Board's night is? <coughs> so there might have to be some joint use if we're going to share some of the facilities. So heaven forbid if we actually had to coordinate events between us. <laughs> mm -hmm. no. There may not be enough time to do that. People may want to use the facilities. <coughs> Don't you do that now? No. 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 Do any coordination at all? No. 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 But you have a shared parking lot. Yes, sort we do. Of. Mm -hmm. And a Coles across the street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's interesting. I mean, everybody knew that we were working on our plan. I mean, we are in our timeline that we've presented and shown before. I mean, we're down to our fifth drawing of the layout of the property, or the building. We're down to final design program coming up. I mean, we've got a timeline in place and moving forward. And then it, it, it's frustrating that you sit in secrecy and say nothing, and then come in right before we're ready to finalize our plan and say, wait a minute, we don't want you guys to go forward. We've got this plan written by an architect that may or may not have anything to do with a library design and say, wait a minute, we don't want you guys to do anything because we think our plan's better. And we don't have the money to fund it, but we think we'll get it. I mean, it, it, it's, it's frustrating from us 
I understand. That, that you guys, I mean, if you were going to save it, so on your green block, mm -hmm. there's enough space for the building. Absolutely. And so if we were worried about all the savings to the taxpayers, you could have told us in January, hey, wait a minute. I could not. Don't. I was in a confidentiality. I couldn't disclose it. Okay. So we were not able to discuss this matter until the deal was done. Well, so that, when, the, when the client wants you to be confidential about a sale, you have uh, the obligation to meet their requirement. And also... Or, or you have the obligation to negotiate a better deal. However, so you, however I have to go by what the client, well, the person that was a seller, had to go by what their, their conditions and what their agreement was. So we, we have procured nine acres. Mm -hmm. We have a beautiful site with a nice <coughs> view also. And we have plans to utilize that space. I mean, we've worked with the community with long-term vision planning for five years. We've had independent consultants come in with space, worked with people from the community. What do you, the community members, want? How do we allocate that space? We've done all of the due diligence going through it, come up with all of the information, and we've moved down the road. And again, you were commended for that. Mm -hmm. And right now it's on paper. And paper can be wadded up and thrown in a trash can, okay? And you go forward. Now, if I was to ask my, uh, Mr. Sean O'Neill, our planner, if he was ever uh, approached by the library or anything, and he, of all people, would be the spearhead or the gateway to the township and anything to be developed in it. Mr. O'Neill, you care to comment? As far as specifically communications between the library and their plan to develop the property, I was mentioned a, a meeting that was had, and I don't recall how long ago, but we had a discussion then. I sat down with uh, Larry and Denise back in the fall, and then a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, the architect came and sat down with me and uh, Jason in, uh, in April, <coughs> library's architect. That's the extent of my discussion with them. Okay. You were at our meeting just a few days ago. Oh, well, and on Thursday, uh, four days ago, I was here at a one o'clock meeting okay. with the library to listen to the plans. Okay, thank you. Is it possible to ask a question? Sure. I don't understand yeah. the proceedings, so. Um, I'm not sure either. <laughs> you know, I voted for the, <laughs> the library. And I'm wondering when you were doing the planning that when you asked when people were asked what they wanted out of it, were they asked what they wanted out of the library, or was it proposed as a community center then? Because it's a library. Would have, as a library. library. Okay. A library, but but with a lot of we're not going to go from ten thousand right. filled with books to thirty thousand filled with books. Right. Um, I mean, we can if we want to show or not. You know, we, we've got a design that fits the existing collection with 20% increase, but the rest of it is um, space for um, community activities and present, you know, meeting and uh, come in. This whole room would be filled for a month for people doing embroidery. So you could come in and learn embroidery for a month. The next month it would be how to fix a computer, you know, and, and that kind of stuff. So it's not just filling it up. Okay, with, I just wonder board. what the criteria was for asking the question, what was one out of the library, or a library versus a community? And, and it was, to the what do you, the public, want in the facility? Okay. And a lot of what they said is they want community uh, events, yeah. a place to meet, a place to talk, a place to have study rooms, places to have meetings and stuff like that. Absolutely. And that's everything that we put in there. Okay. Which, which, based on that, for the township to go out and build a building and duplicate would then be a duplicate effort of the same thing that they told us that they wanted. So from that perspective, you would have um, an issue from that. You know, we would already have the space and we would have it two years faster, um, so quicker, faster, cheaper, better. Um, than, than what you mo potentially could have. Yes, I see your hand going up. I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you said is true. Mm -hmm. You've mm -hmm. gone a far distance mm -hmm. and they haven't. Mm -hmm. There's a Everything you said is mm -hmm. absolutely true. 
but is there an opportunity to reconsider? Is there an opportunity to think broader than the plan you had? Uh, when I was in business, I had the five P's. That was the principle I always worked with. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Is this an opportunity to rethink it? That's all. But everything you said is true. You've done all the homework. They did nothing. Now they're here to say, maybe we have a chance to do something better. That's all the, that I hear. I'm really not convinced there's a lot of savings in the... Well, is it an opportunity to discuss to, I, but to, I'm just to saying, study it? we've looked at it, and I don't think that there's a lot of opportunity for savings. you still got to build the square footage, you know. You still got to have parking, even though we're having an opinion here that maybe we can share on some parking, you know, stuff like that. I mean, a lot of these costs are already going to be done whether you build them on top of each other or next to each other. It's not like we're three miles away. We're right across the, right across we're right, right, right across right. a boulevard. If we put in a so, boulevard. So before yeah. before somebody makes the comment, it's going to be but, a campus either way. But John, before somebody yeah. makes the comment, the roof is cheaper. Okay. One roof. Yes. So we don't want to be the stepchild living in the basement. Hypothetically, I mean, we're not going to be the kid that never moves out. Okay, we went first floor. Well, the difference in a library load floor bearing is substantially different than an office building. So you can't say that the building is going to be cheaper because our part of the building, if it was in the middle, you have to build the brick house to support it. So when you just say, well, you know, we can save $2 million, I mean, you've got to understand that, unfortunately, this is going to come out of my mouth, a library building is different. <laughs> I mean, it's not just another office building. So you've got to worry about that. I mean, if you put us in the basement, okay, you know, then we'll live in the basement and we'll come up once, you know, once a year. But, I mean, so there is difference. Well, it's the same amount of grass to cut. I, you know, I don't get this. You know, you, you still got to plow a parking lot. I mean, if it's 10% larger, it's not going to make that big a difference. The problems and situations are not that big. The other issue is we've got a piece of property. You add ours together. You could have a beautiful campus. You can have specific, you talk about an older crowd getting dropped off. I mean, you can't walk, Rick. You, you'd love to come to the library for your refuge, but you don't want to walk 40 feet across the parking lot on a beautiful day. What's the say you're going to come from the third floor to the basement? The coffee. <laughs> Our socks. <laughs> so, you know, from that perspective, you have to pay for it. <laughs> I mean, if you put on that piece of property a standalone single purpose building for the library, the kids are off to the side. They're not screaming as they're running through your, the, the main lobby. You've got police, sit, police and fire, public safety at a separate <laughs> single-use building. And then you have the township, the seniors, and the historical society and all that in the building that you've designed. Then you have single point of use for each one of the buildings. And you don't have people parking at the back of the large parking lot that you have to have to make it to the building. So there are other ways to look at this. And the fact that a standalone building on our budget is not going to be you know, some huge Taj Mahal building. So I, I, don't, you know, I, I don't want us to get focused in that a single building is the only way to do it. If that was the case, why did Huron Valley build a high school, a middle school, and an elementary school? They're all on the same property. Yeah, but they can't afford to maintain them. They're broke. But, but they still built three different ones. That's, that's exactly and why they're broke. Exactly why so they're broke. broke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, but, yeah, go ahead, Joe. Um, from a, the, the, the township uh, library board is, is separate as is the township board. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the bond or issuing the bond, mm -hmm. Does doesn't and maybe um, um, our, Jerry, finance, our finance guru can answer this. Um, doesn't the doesn't the township board <coughs> have to approve the bond issue or the issuing of bonds? That's they already did that before it went on the ballot. 
No, no I'm sorry, we allowed you to you allowed the approved. ballot. Okay, we correct. The language. Right. You still have to get the bonds approved by the township board. Yeah. So over and a year ago, we had to get permission mm -hmm. from the correct by get to, board to, to from the township the board to to put that on to put it on the ballot. Yes. I'm asking the the question: Does if the township board doesn't vote to allow the bonds to be sold, then the bonds can't be sold, is my understanding. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. So then the follow-up question is, is the township not going to approve the sale of the bonds that the voters approved if we decide to do a standalone building? It's a question of the board. I, I think the vote you, the brought up a good, you brought up a good point uh, earlier. You mentioned that uh, why would anybody walk 43 feet from this building to that building when it was nice and sunny out. And I'm saying to you, why would you walk 43 feet in the rain or in the winter time? Why would you walk there when you don't have to do that? Uh, we're not here to be argumentative, I don't think. I think, think we're here to tell you what our plan is because you asked us to be here. But to argue the point, I think you have to decide the direction that you want to do. I, I think we've kind of laid out from a board standpoint of where we're coming from. My understanding, Rick and Glenn, is that if, if you didn't want to go with this committee and you as a board just decided um, to go forward with the bond issue, I do believe that question would come in front of our board. Now, how, how that would turn out, I can't tell you. Um, I can't speak for our board. Um, and I believe that would be an agenda question that the, the board would have to vote on. So, Going down that path, are you prepared as a township to pay all the cancellation fees for what we've done so far? Why would we do no, that? Because you're not going to approve our Because bond. we aren't? No, hold on a second. No, no, that's no, what stop you just said. No. If we stop building a building on our own, we have architects, we have construction manager contracts in place for us to make an informed decision, are you prepared to pay the cancellation fees? I think the question from my viewpoint is, are your plans so far that those exact same requirements can't be in a different shape than the building that you have proposed so far? Well, so to, you, to quote somebody earlier, you would have to throw away the piece of paper and start over because the shape is different. I'm it's in, that, I'm in right. that business and quite frankly it's done hundreds of times every day because a better idea has come up. So, <coughs> I, I, not to say that it needs to, but that is not the worst thing that could ever happen if we were able to save some money. So then you're willing to go with the construction manager and the architects that we've hired? Don't know them. We would have to look at that and understand where you're at. I do not understand where you're at. I'm sorry. Well, okay, so, so let's, let, let's yeah. right. step back. So, and it was presented to some of the people that um, Joe met with. So we're on Indonesia Company. Well, if I may, just to clarify for everybody, the, the previous meeting that I spoke of with this prior board and this previous board in January of 16, the previous trustees of this board were not at it. So they don't have first-hand personal knowledge. And only myself and Pam Collins, who is now unfortunately passed, Larry Denise were at it. There was a library, there was a meeting that happened with Joe, the library treasurer. And Mr. Supervisor and Mr. Treasurer, but none of us, no one else was at that meeting. Right, right. So we're at a little bit of a loss. We need to catch up. We need to share community. We need to share information, and we need to work on communication. <laughs> yeah, great. So we 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 took the independence consultants um, that was hired, and he presented a um, space utilization January of. 2017. I mean, 200 square foot for the janitor closet, 400 square foot for this, 1,800 square foot for that. So they went through that. We went through four, archite four architects, um, did a presentation, and we selected a presentation based on that. They came back with, sorry, it's the best I got, like a big black drawing. So, you know, this one happens to have children's area in blue and 
you know, adults and, you know, all of the different, I mean, down to computers, toilets, all that kind of stuff. It's a spatial study, right? So based on what was provided to them from the community input. We're now on Rev F. So we keep going through, and now we're down to, which um, you saw at the meeting. So it is, we had F or G, I don't know, E or F, whatever. So now it's down to, this is the layout. I mean, when you design a library, you don't just say, well, we need 21,000 square foot, just you know, line up the books and put stuff in. I mean, you have to be considerate. Children are way over here while the adults are way over here. They've got to have fun. They've got to talk. They've got to be loud. You know, we've got space to buffer in between. So when the community comes in, there's a mixed area. There's open area for, you know, changing display of media and art and whatnot. We have an area separated, concealed and obtainable at night, after hours. So if you want to do something after hours, you can come in. But when you come in after hours, then you have to be considerate that you got to get to the restrooms. So there are so many different things when you consider, okay, I don't want to go in the library, I just want to drop off my books. So on the corner of the building, facilitated a drive-through. So you can drop off the books, but the person that wants to walk in and drop off, they've got to be able to drop off. But at the end, they all got to get to the same central point from the check-in area. So there's, there's a material flow issue. Um, there's all kinds of different things. You don't just put on a square area and say, there it is. You know, so, so there's a tremendous amount of differences between a library architect and just building a building. So Glenn, let me just respond, since this is the first time I've seen this. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you just look at it spatially, it looks very similar to the shape of the building that's been proposed by Rick tonight. Now, does it make any sense for the township board to utilize that square footage and incorporate what we need to your square footage instead of the other way around. So that's the communication that I think that we're looking for. If, if that is so far along and you guys are absolutely sold on it, then maybe we say, that's great. How can the township property and the needs fit into that plan instead of the other way around? So I, I think that's where the communication comes in because it is such a, it sounds like such a good idea to share services and share space that you've gone that far, then why don't we try to fit into your plan? There's no way in the world that Rick, I think, tried to think that you guys should fit into our, our box. Maybe the township board has to fit into your box. The one that you guys showed us is only about two thirds of the size of what we were looking for. Uh, and you said you could yeah, that all. Oh, yeah. That's all that was concept. Kind of understood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But let's say you, we want our other ten thousand square feet. That's Where are we going to gonna find it? Real easy. You can expand a lot of a lot, lot of ways you can go. And what would it do to the cost? It really wouldn't increase it any. Okay, because we your your footprint will go out if you you're still have a gross thirty thousand square foot building. Okay. okay. But there's economies of scale, and I keep telling you this because if we're building, I don't care if I don't care if we're down and you're up. That's irrelevant at this point. Right. The reality is you got one foundation. The reality is you have one roof. The reality is you can put a library on any floor if you want to because it's a matter of doing pour and pan and it'll take a heavy load, no problem. Done it many times. Okay. So it all depends on where you want to be in the building and what your desire is. Now, I wasn't trying to make anybody the troll and live under the bridge or the redheaded stepchild <laughs> or anything like that. Actually, it's an enviable location yeah. because you've got the best view of everything there and you've got the best use of the outdoors. And one of the things that I noticed on your plan was you have an outside play area for children. And that would be a great place to have it at grade level. It, and there are ways with the topography out there that both ends of that library could have accesses from the lower level as well as from the main lobby. And there's ways and means that 
through your architect, and it could very well be your architect. Okay? Yeah. You know, I think that's the uh, frustrating thing for me. I hear a lot of great ideas, a lot of great concepts and everything, but there's no hard facts to back that up. Yeah, yes. these all sound really good, and, but I've never operated township offices. I don't know how you operate. I don't know what your needs are, and I would venture to say you don't understand the library's needs. And no. That's the frustrating part. So for us to sit here and say, yeah, this is going to work, this is the best idea, is to have a combined facility, I, I'm just, I'm not there yet. None of us are. I, I don't think any of us know what the end result might be. Here's the, here's the reality. If we can build a 150-car um, parking lot instead of a 250-car parking lot, that's reality and savings. If we can, if we can share 10,000 square feet instead of you building 10,000 and the township board building 10,000, we're saving 10,000 square foot of building space that the people of White Lake don't have to build. So that's the reality of we need what we need to look at to find out if it's possible. Yeah, some of those things I, I don't disagree on. Right. But when you talk about utilizing the same meeting rooms, I think that, that could be a real issue. Well, you might not need a, a 10,000 square foot meeting room. The township board might. So we share a... We don't um, have a meeting room. <laughs> uh, maybe we share a, well, you have this, and I'm going to assume that eventually your new building probably has a, a room bigger than this. Yeah. We need a room like this, but we also need a larger room. So those kind of uses back and forth are what we'd like to talk to you about. The senior center will also need and the room. Senior center. But senior we center. also hold public you know, conference, yeah. you know, programs mm -hmm. in, in this room too. So Absolutely. I, it, it's, the coordination would have to be tremendous. Yeah. And and right who would that, have priority? But right know? now that coordination is hard because we don't have enough, so that's I mean, right. And we're the same way. No yeah, you're exactly there. correct. There, so yeah, I, I certainly understand the um, and uh, desire the cost savings. That's you know the, the, the fewer dollars we spend building, um, the you know it's less money out of my pocket um, there, and not just that we can just shift that that money over to and spend it on something else, but that we can you know, get the best value for the for the taxpayers and certainly for the fiscal responsibility. There's also um, looking at what is our what is our mission. Why why does White Lake Township have a library? Um, and what what does the library what are the citizens telling us today what that library needs to do and to be? And we've heard Yes, we need books, but we also need computers. And when the downturn came um, in the, you know, the 2008 type of, of time frame, you know, every available computer we had was double and triple booked, and we, you know, we were able to expand that, and that was a great, you know, that really filled a need, and we were able to respond to that type of thing. And and those are the types of things that they continue you know, the. Uh, people are asking more of. I want study space. I go to a. I go to the Highland Library, a standalone building, and there's there's um, there's study rooms there. I go to the Commerce, a standalone library, and there's study space. I go to Milford Library, and there's standalone space. That's um, and that's uh, got study rooms. I go to Waterford, a uh, standalone library, and that's got study space. I go to Heartland, and that's a standalone library, and that's got a study space, although they're combining two facilities uh, into one for uh, for you know, savings in terms of, of of operations there. So you know, it's not just what White Lake has and what White Lake needs, but many of those needs um, are shared in the, the connected uh, connected uh, communities uh, there. And you know, but most of the of the communities around us have said. Library is a is a special or specific um, need um, there, and I think the idea. I love the idea that that we have you know uh, property next next to each other, so that we can result in a campus uh, there. But just as um, most you know, 
uh, libraries uh, on the college campuses are, are standalone buildings. Um, they're, you know, the, uh, that's also, you know, I guess in my picture of, of what a campus is, uh, the library would be a, a separate space and be able to use um, light from all directions. Uh, there, because light's such a big, important uh, factor for, for a library space, it's you know, different than a, uh, uh, an office uh, type of environment. Certainly, I mean, you know, your, your natural light versus your, your, your artificial light, and, and being able to do that, both with, with roof lines, um, to be able to bring and draw in, in light would be, you know, a, a challenge in a, a multi-story um, Building. I think when we looked at the um, at the footings and uh, foundation, we weren't looking at the you know with this soil bare um, multiple story building. We we recognized that uh, for a library operation to be able to operate efficiently and effectively within the uh, the, the operating budget that we that we have, that we would need to uh, not you know, to have visibility, be able to have you know, one person monitor um, uh, the space. So we, you know, we're looking at gaining some efficiencies by moving from a, 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 a two levels to, to one to be able to reduce uh, the cost of operation even as we expand uh, expand the space. I have a question. Yes. Um, <coughs> Construction program. Uh, do you have an anticipated start date for that? So, so we have a very detailed mm -hmm. timeline, and our timeline has us ha having our design pretty much finalized, about ninety percent complete, and costing started on June sixth of seventeen. Mm -hmm. well, that's a that's the design development documents then. Yep. Yeah. So our our design development documents and then we will finalize the design by the end of August mm -hmm. and then it will go out for bid and the bidding process from November to January and break ground in March. Could could I could I ask a little more specific yep. on that? <coughs> Between D D being um, approved in June and finally approved in either July August. or August. And August. There's a huge, huge jump between design development and construction drawing. <coughs> what what time frame do they have for construction it? drawing? Sixty five days from mid August to mid November. Two months from August till November. Okay. All right. Thank you. I need to understand a little bit more. Jimmy, how to? Yeah. If um, I ask the question, if the if the library was built just the, the concept mm -hmm. that you have, and the township <coughs> duplicated that right on the top of the building, are you against a combined building if it was to have the offices of the and the township having the same space or maybe a smaller space on top? The roof doesn't, the floor doesn't have to be the same square footage. Is the board against that kind of conceptual issue? And if so, are there, uh, what are the reasons for that? If it, using your, uh, the existing plan that you have. So, um, so to answer the question the same way they answered the question we asked, <coughs> sure, we would have to think about it. Yeah. Okay. And come back. I mean, there, there, are to, and I don't know his name. I didn't listen long enough. There are plenty of reasons, and I'm not going to rip them off. Why did every township around us have a single building for the library? Let me, if I could. So I, I have personal knowledge in that. Uh, I designed the campus for the township hall in Waterford. I designed the library campus uh, site in Highland Township. I designed the campus setting at Commerce Township that used to be Pine, uh, um, yeah. Lakes of Pinewood uh, Clubhouse. And uh, Ernie Fuller was my client. So the difference is, and I just a theory throwing out to you, that the two entities did not have the same timeline 
at the time of design. When, when I did the Waterford campus, it was just strictly the Township Hall. That came first and that was their priority. The Township Library was someplace else. Um, Waterford, I mean uh, uh, Highland Township, they had their old building. They wanted a new library. The Township Hall wasn't quite ready yet. But if you look at that, if you look at that site plan, we had the Township Hall virtually adjacent to, uh, right next to the, uh, next to the uh, library. In Commerce Township, they have a very nice township hall, no room for a library, so they found another spot for their library. In this particular case, we're very unique. We have the ability, virtually on the same timeline. Well, you don't have any money. Well, right now, let me, let me just point this out. Not to say that this is going to happen, but if this township board did not approve the bonds, you don't have the money either. And all the money you've spent thus far comes out of your operating budget. So in that respect, we, we have to work together somehow. But that would be so, against the will of the voters. Yeah, yeah that's no, the, not, the will of the voters would then not be carried out. Okay, there's, exactly. Exactly. And, and there's two you ways not to there's vote, two. put the bonds out. The voters who voted to approve that, <coughs> that would be totally against what they voted to approve. But they didn't vote for the property. They didn't vote for the, yes. the, the floor plan. They, they voted didn't to vote. go ahead and issue the bonds to pay for the new library. That's correct. So we're not saying not build the library. We're just saying let's look at it together and have the same end. That's kind of where what we've presented here tonight. So, so you would use your authority to bully us into your plan. Oh, you're putting words into my mouth, aren't you? I didn't say that. I'm just saying. Well, you're saying it's our plan or no, no plan. You said we didn't have money. Hypothetically. And I'm saying you spent money that wasn't earmarked for what you're using it for in anticipation of getting money in the future. And so we need each other is what I'm telling you. Um, Mr. Supervisor, if I may, I just want to clarify two things. To go back to your question, Jim, um, to say that one board is for or against anything, mm -hmm. this is the first time that we've yeah. had the opportunity yeah. to talk. Yeah. Right. So we right. haven't discussed this at all. This board hasn't discussed right. this. No decisions have been made. The purpose of tonight's meeting was to just open the line of communication. Yeah. Just explore the possibilities and opportunities and explore if there's any cost, sa cost savings and explore um, how we can best serve our residents. Yeah. For, for, so, the, for the purposes of, and, um, of the two boards, it may be a silly question. Why haven't there been opportunities, and maybe there have been, for the two boards to come together um, Liz, you make a great point that you made it earlier on that the two boards should have been long time ago yes. working in concert occasionally on projects. Yes. And if it hasn't happened, then the, the, the two boards should be, I would think that there would should have been opportunities to work together. I'm just looking at it from a totally outside perspective. And I totally respect in terms of the two entities by law have have um, uh, what, they have responsibilities as two separate boards mm -hmm. in terms of operation totally get that and we want I think citizens want that that's why a board mm -hmm. exists but it seems to me there should have been in the past there instead was. of instead of everybody living in a cocoon yeah, of their own. But there was. On January of 2016, there was a group meeting, and we were told the township was not interested in moving forward at that time. Okay. Okay, yep. That happened. We talked. We went forward. L let me ask you, did you come before the township board and ask that? Because I've never heard of it. I've never no, heard of no, it. No, no. I, 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 it was what meeting. I have later learned is that meeting was not shared with the rest of oh, that that's prior too bad. board. It is I'm too bad because board. that board. brings us to where we are. It, it was not shared with the other members. Let me just say, I used to work at General Motors. Worked there for 15 years. Worked on launching new vehicles. There comes a time where you just can't make any more changes if you're going to have your vehicle when you want your vehicle, okay? And so while I, while I will say that this is all very good information, and, and while I will say there may be some economy of scales that have yet to be proven, you know, and that kind of stuff, there comes a time where you just can't make any more changes. And we are very quickly approaching That's that fine. time of, the, of that. If we're going to have a library in May of 2018, 19, 19, then we are very quickly approaching a date where we can't really make any more changes. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. We've only got to like June 6th to yeah. really do that. Yeah. Okay. So if you weren't willing to delay it, that may that's be a That's what I'm just saying. If that's the end date, this is where we are. But there okay. are some instances where Samsung had to actually can I, their S8 because know, there was a better fine. idea. Yeah. So, so, so both, both sides. So let's take it from a, from a, a different approach or a second approach. Hypothetically speaking, we we just we decide we would still like our standalone building. You've got a standalone police and fire building. You have a standalone administrative community center building. Are there other areas on the property that we can be cost efficient um, and work together? Acceleration, deceleration lanes, mm -hmm. water, yeah. um, you know, and that kind of stuff that you could guarantee the funding of because you've got the money now and we wouldn't have to wait for the vehicle to be built because we don't want that model we want today i mean are there those opportunities so we can still be diligent and you know physically responsible to make sure we do something like that is it your be, site plan far enough along i think it would be very prudent to have the two boards talk or the committee that rick's talking about to get together to discuss just exactly those kind of things. Let the architects talk, let the engineers talk, and see if we can't actually do that. Or if we have to, quite frankly, I'd be more than willing to be in your basement as a township board. We don't have a basement. Janet, a question. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, for us to have a basement. We'll build the basement. It's going to cost a lot thinking. more money yeah. to put in a basement. Yeah. Yeah. We'll so cover let, the let's just come back to this committee. So um, I wrote down two library, two township, one police, one fire, and a consultant. Mm -hmm. So if we, that thereby says we, we are overruled on everything from a, from a majority point of view. All the people that are involved in it have skin in the game in the but municipal council. But you already counts. said that fire and police are separate. It doesn't matter. They're still going to be functional. We still have to discuss how the roadways are all going to interact. Mm -hmm. How are you going to have access and easements necessary for a complete I, function of a civic center? I totally agree with that. Yeah, and okay, that's what a professional planner yeah. does. They look at the needs of what the township would be. They look at needs of what the library would be. The fire police look at the avenue that we're talking about. As Mr. Lilly said, one of the things that I'd like to see is us incorporate a streetscape to start to identify that as our downtown area. Mm -hmm and also any future potential i'll call a conjoined <coughs> development by others yeah. that how that's all going to affect so it's not simply just a matter of going out and walking out in the field and plotting out an area and this is where the building's going to go there's there's a lot more to it i think you misunderstand me what i'm saying is the fact that you know i think our library is pretty far along I don't think it's unreasonable to say we've got all this land, let's have separate facilities, and let's maximize where we can share. There's plenty of time to do that part of it. There's not a lot of time to have this discussion about mm -hmm. are we in your basement, are you in my basement, or whatever. That kind of discussion's kind of almost gone. That discussion time's gone. Well, and what, what is your urgency with, did you say January of 19 you want to be built by? No, no, May of 2019. Okay, what is, is your that, urgency? Our urgency is that people May have been telling us, our customers, our patrons have been telling us for over five years mm -hmm. that we need more space and we agree. There are things that we want to do as a library that we can't do in this facility Okay, but right what now. is the urgency to that date? I, the I, I urgency is that the people thing. voted almost, you know, almost a year ago to go ahead and start doing this. Okay, so, okay, we, so we've been marching yep. to that tune to do it, to get it done quickly. You know, people want the access to the facility. Right. Okay? If you said to those same people, look, we've got an opportunity to save our residents millions of dollars it, I, that, but it might take longer of, that needs a how lot do you study think those residents be, would respond i know but so, i don't so think there's time to do that study you don't have an opportunity to save the residents anything We're you have the opportunity money. for them to spend less more I beg money. your pardon? <laughs> <laughs> I totally don't understand what you're saying. If, 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 no, it isn't the same thing. <laughs> no, it isn't. Because what you're saying is you can build this building and get what you perceive the community to want by utilizing the funds that have already been approved by the library. No. 
That's not you yes, all money. because we're no, no, not doing it all. That is your money. But your money. you said the building was $14 million. Yeah, but it so goes the, back to what I said about proration of no, costs. Oh, the whole architect second. of no. the building, the contractor of the building, would dedicate an actual dollar amount for that Got square it. foot. Got it. But if the total cost is $14 million mm -hmm. and magically it's 30,000 square foot for us and 30,000 square foot for you, that means the bill's half and half. Mm -hmm. We already have the money secured. That means you have to go to the, to the township, to the residents, for only $8 million equal to what we have. Mm -hmm. If we decide, no, we'd like our, our, our progress, our plan, our building, and you still want to build the building you have for the senior center and everything else, you then have to go for twice the amount of money from the residents to get the building that you'd wish. So therefore, you're asking for less money if the two are put together. I think it's going to cost the library less money. I don't think it's it can't. It can't. I, I believe that's to be determined by architect and the yeah. contractor. But we it, already have the seven million. We can't say that it will. Yeah. It, it, it can't save us money from the perspective of we have a bond for eight point six million. Well, it, it, guys, the bond language isn't eight point six million. It's not to exceed eight point six million. Okay. If we can save our residents millions, my God, <laughs> please be open to that. that I, I'm idea. open, but to Joe's point, where's the data? Yeah. Where's well, the data? That's, that's why we want to. That's why we want. That's why I'm asking, asking to do a committee, committee together. When? And put, when would? When could your we people, have it, something back? Pull your people that on your board. Put your people together who you would like to represent. I will do the same with the township board. And I'm going to recruit myself from it because I am the supervisor, as I would say you should recruit yourself because you are the, the board chair. And let other people look at it. And let those people come together and, and see what we can come up with as a concept. There's nothing we can consult your architectural firm, your engineering firm. I'm not opposed to that at all. They may look at this and might say, you know what, this is an opportunity. And by the way, yeah, we'd like the contract because it's going to be a little better job. Do you have any kind of timeline? I would like to start this relatively soon. You no know, completion. Oh, completion. They, they don't want to go to a vote until July. Of it's not a matter of not. We're trying because to you wouldn't have enough. They wouldn't have enough information <coughs> no, for right. people to vote on. Well, we've only had possession of the property for a matter of weeks now. Right. So it's a little unrealistic to expect all the data to be out in front. I totally agree. Yeah. Well, so that's why you have to wait until 2019. It takes time to put this together. But I, have, I have a question. Could you go to your architects and your designers and ask them, if we tried this, would it really save us anything? I mean, could you do that? Could you just, I don't know, call up and say, if we wanted to do this concept, just off the top of our head, if we wanted to do this concept with the township, would it benefit us? Because if they come back and they say, hey, yeah, this would benefit us, okay, then, then you're more likely to go, okay, be more inclined to work with them because your own architect is saying, yeah, this would be a good idea. I'm just saying, could you just go to them and just ask and just inquire as to what, so, what so their idea would be? That's ask the answer, yes. That's, that's that's simple. But that's the same, that's only one part of it. Is it in the best interest to have a shared building? I mean, you asked the question earlier. But you worry about the Why? fees. Absolutely. You worry about the fees. Would they be willing to waive the fees if they said, we, this is going to be No, 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 no. No, I'm no. saying, is it the user? Just because somebody thinks that's the best, because that's what they want, why do all of the other townships not put the buildings together? That's something you have to look into too. Yeah. Obviously we heard because of time, mm -hmm. but given same time, same place, everything, would people be building all of their total facilities together? Someone would have to find out. Well, another issue, not to belabor this, but some townships, the boards are appointed. Mm -hmm. So there's not that a part of it. That library may not have a choice. To mm -hmm. They have to begin with the township and municipal building. City libraries are a department of a city. Right. So they are mm -hmm. part of that whole pack. So some may be structured like that. Then they're in one building because they're one entity. 
Well, there's one thing I'd like to find out, if maybe you can help, is to find out what the pros are to have a separate library building. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that what this committee would do? <coughs> well, that would hopefully be part of uh, yeah. this uh, discovery that we would, we would get involved in. Yeah. And I would like to entertain trying to do this relatively soon, and sooner than later. Good point. The, the one question I have is um, something that Mr. Powell mentioned is the actual bond language states that the property, that the library will be built on this property. Um, I don't think it's a, no, no, I don't think it's property specific. Didn't they say acreage in the we didn't own the property. We didn't own the property. So you couldn't say. Um, no. 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 Yes. No. Is that in there? No, okay. we just right. said that that but was I, a possibility. I'm still not sure about the, the back documentation to the bond. I think there's a little bit more there. I, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question, um, and I think the treasurer can answer this question. Um, if, you're, if you plan on going to the voters in July of 2018, isn't there a police knowledge that um, has to go back at that same time? I would have to look. And I've got that information in my office. And, and the library knowledge. Is it Terry? Yeah. Police, police and fire. And Terry fire. believes it's and police and fire. fire. And we, you talked about voter fatigue. And so this would be four mm -hmm. proposals on a single ballot. I don't know how that works into your plan, but I know how I would. I mean, people will be dividing the votes. Mm -hmm. I think it's a um, bad time. <coughs> Generally speaking, the renewal of an operation village is not as difficult as if we're going to ask for more money. I agree, except we may not have when you also have an money. increase right. on the same ballot, I think it just gets monkeyer. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Larry? I have, well, I have one last question. The bond that was passed by by two votes, Three. is that bond, does that money have to be um, spent by a specific time or it goes away? When we were presenting the millage to the public, mm -hmm. we told them what timeline that we would work off of. So there's an expectation. There's an expectation. I mean, it's not like yeah. commerce where they sat for seven or eight years and then finally, you know, built the building. So it's not going to expire. Correct. Okay. But the but the township board has the authority whether or not to approve that bond, or is that a separate bond? Because I was, I was hearing that, the, uh, that there would be a, a construction bond at some point that would have to be approved by the township board. Is that correct? I believe it's already been approved, even though they're saying it's not. I think it's Mr. Lilly? Yeah. The bond proceeds that they're going to ask for, they're going to have to submit a lot of criteria in order to arrive at a final number. The, the general citizens have approved up to eight million some odd dollars, but if that project estimate comes back at seven, then that's all they're going to be able to borrow. They're not going to be able to borrow just eight million dollars to do. They're going to have to prove what they're going to use the money but for. But the township right? board has to approve that bond. That's correct. So basically, if I understand it correctly, tell me if I'm wrong, the township board has actual leverage over the library project. The board has to approve the bond mm -hmm. for them to move forward. Okay, but is that not leverage that the board could exercise? Say the board, the board is not required to approve that bond. I, again, I believe it has already been approved, even though. No, it hasn't. It's a decision of the so, board. So, 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 to take what the the township board approved, putting it on the ballot, mm -hmm. for which we then believe approved the bond. I think what they're now saying is, yeah, we approved to put it on the ballot, but now we get to approve it a second time? Is that? That is absolutely correct. We're going to, the township board is gonna to have to approve your bonds. And and you've given us no criteria no, what we're of waiting, what would be responsible to do. What we're waiting for is you to prove to the bonding attorney 
what your final figures are, what you're going to do. And when were you going to communicate what the response is? will communicate that to Terry, you Terry, if, I, if I may, I, I, I emailed I I emailed one. a meeting a couple of weeks ago and asked that question. Yeah, I and responded it was to not, It was not answered. Wait a second. I responded to Glenn and I copied Denise. When? Okay, yeah, this is a couple. the name of the fellow. This is a couple weeks ago. I, I, my, I asked the guy, I didn't go through my email. Well, it was sent to you, and my reply was very simple. Okay, you, you had asked what the exact procedure is to get to get this bond. And my reply to you was that question needs to be proposed to the bonding attorney, Paul Wagaski. Okay. Okay. So every <clears throat> bond we've done since I've been here, guys, um, our bonding attorney is the one that handles all the steps. Okay. So. so once once we have our cost estimate, okay. that's basically it. That can be used. To that's the, the budget sheet. Okay. Does the bonding attorney have um, the authority? Does the, or the bonding attorney provide an opinion to your board that says what they are proposing? Is fiscally responsible is or does he just present facts does a bonding attorney um, form an opinion make a determination yeah yeah so yeah. if you've got I, no, I, he, he, he should be providing data okay I'm just I'm just asking because I, I, I don't know, know either but okay I, I just ask the question we've hired a construction manager yep McCarthy and Smith very well known they've done st. Patrick's yep. they are very meticulous in the process that we need to go through in order to get a building built the most effectively and efficiently and cost effectively as, as possible. Um, they helped us to hire our architect. They're gonna see us through this whole process. So it's not like it's a, mm -hmm. when we, we've spent a lot of time looking at the details. It's not going to be a Taj Mahal, it's going to be a nice library that people in White Lake can be proud of. That's a but that wasn't the gist of my question. My question <coughs> is, who has the leverage here, and how will that leverage be applied if, say, the library wants to go forward, but the board says, well, wait a minute, we've got a better idea, maybe you should consider the muscle that we've got. And the muscle would be, we're not going to approve your bond if you don't, you know, meet us halfway as far as the construction is concerned. Awesome. Uh, you're looking, you're looking at, from my perspective here, a potential impasse that the both boards are going to have to sit down and consider uh, with regard to what they want to do for the benefit of the township and the residents as a whole. As a taxpayer, I want to know what's going on. Okay, as I'm sure all of you do. And it seems to me that there's a, a, a split here. You've got the proposal, you've got one proposal you've been working very diligently on for five years. The board on this side, okay, has their own concerns because they'd like to keep costs to the whole township at a certain point. And their leverage may very well be that they're not gonna approve the bond unless you come around in some way to reach a, a synthesis of the two of the two positions, if in fact they are diametrically opposed. <coughs> so I think I think I think you've done all your work. Mm -hmm. You're ready to go forward. They're coming up now because it's taken them a while to reach the stage that they had to be at. And here there's a proposal, or at least a uh, a, a concept that says, well, wait a minute. We might be able to put all of this together if you're willing to, uh, to postpone or to delay what your time frame is. <coughs> At the same time, I don't know what your cancellation fees are, but that may have to be taken into consideration if in fact there's a delay in the scheduling on your end. So I think that there's got to be a lot of facilitation here of some sort, and I'm talking about facilitation in the sense of Taking your position, taking your what, what you need, taking what they need, and, and coming together to, to come up with some sort of a proposal that'll work for everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, have to, and also taking into consideration the various jurisdictional things that might be resolved with a, with a, a, a condominium type of a concept. 
So until they come back and say, we're not going to issue the bond. You don't know what they're going to do. We have no idea. No. And, and, <coughs> Which is and we are proceeding based on what the voters approve. That, that's true up to a point. No, so, it's true to the end. We are proceeding to what the voters right, approve. But you can't fulfill your part <laughs> until the board says, okay, we'll approve the bond okay to let you go forward i don't know that i don't know what what they're going to do if this is the first meeting this is an opportunity to, to to throw the cards on the table face up so that you can see what everybody has at stake here that's what i think you're you're looking at right now because they hold the final decision as far as the economics goes you can't go forward unless they approve the bond and they've got their concerns now with regard to total costs to everybody else. You're both on the same page as far as having to deal with the taxpayers. The question is, what are you going to present when the time comes to present? It? If you're going to present a $16 million project because you want a separate building and the synthesis would say this could be an eight million dollar project if we work it out properly and if your concerns and your interests and your needs are presented you know in the context of overlapping with theirs that might be a better idea but you can't get there until you actually sit down and, and, and work out what your what your positions are what your interests are and what your actual needs are going to be once you, you know, once you actually get to the point where you've really got to work with each other. I, think I, I guess back, you know, when I started in the beginning of public comment, the question that they brought up is, the bond isn't approved. I'm still kind of, I'm still questioning how are you spending money with an architect and all that if the bond is not officially approved. So, yes. so sir, the bond was voted and approved by the voters. I Period. understand. I understand okay. that. But so, it hasn't been issued. So that is the premise we're working on. That the bond was approved, the voters wanted it, we're building it. Do you understand? Okay. Until, until a couple of weeks ago, when our treasurer went to talk about the process of funding, the reimbursements, the actual physical process, which McCarthy and <coughs> facilitate, that is the first time that there has been any question, any statement, any interest by the majority of the township board about what was happening at the library. There had been no participation in any of our meetings other than when Liz shows, which the majority of the time does. That was the only interest by the township at that time. That's independent of the township. It's up to you to find out whether you have the funds. <laughs> you don't have well, the funds. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> if, if, if you got an offer for a job and you went to work, and you went to work, right. do you have an expectation on Friday you're going to get a paycheck? No, because I haven't sat down and talked and got all the details of everything. No, I don't expect. Sorry, sir, you keep sitting there with this smirk on your face, yes. but you, you don't take things seriously. I all. take it extremely well, seriously that if you went to work, you wouldn't expect to be paid. If I, I, if I, I, you I had an offer letter for a I job, an you're going to get paid this amount of money, and it starts on this day, you show up. I sign the paperwork, I don't have okay, anything. Okay, the voters approved it. That doesn't mean you got the money. I, I believe we reported in the spinal column that the board um, and correct me if I'm correct me if I'm wrong um, sorry that you purchased the land from your existing general fund funds right. yeah from their general fund balance mm -hmm. is how they purchased the property it, it, now is that acceptable because that's millage that was for the current operations not for the new land mm -hmm. I think that needs to be looked into. That was that. It, that that's is acceptable. a responsibility. No, that's not. That's not for this. There was a bond issue for the new land, not for you to purchase out of current operating village. <laughs> that you purchased oh, that went, out of your what general fund. The township land. How did they? How, how, they call the order. We're drifting off here. Yeah. All attention here 
is to so we go forward and, excuse me if I may, is to go forward and, and see if we can create some court kind of a meeting or committee, have some conversation about this, whether we have a small group to sit down. And I welcome uh, your construction manager, I welcome your architect, I would welcome any of those people to be a part of this meeting. Uh, because they may be able to put some light on this uh, that will give us some direction. There, so this is what I look forward to. I think it's getting late, we're all getting tired, and I think we just need to set up a su subsequent meeting to this and be in contact with each other, and I would look forward to hearing who your potential candidates are or your uh, members of the committee and we can kind of go into that uh, direction. Can I ask it now, does, does it make sense for us to all meet together again with the consultants, with the experts that we can actually ask questions of, including the bond council? Yeah. So that we can all mm -hmm. ask those questions instead of a little few that then have to report back to the bigger body, you know, what happens when you try to pass a, a message along. Mm -hmm. So we can have another meeting and have your your experts and have uh, the architect that did those drawings and the bond council. We could probably go a long way towards finding out some of these answers if we did that. Can we do it in a week? Ah, yeah, I'm ready. This week, yeah. we'll check availability. Obviously, so I think first of all, our board meets on Wednesday this week. Yeah. We will discuss what your proposal is as far as a committee. We will discuss whether or not we wish to even move forward to a, a central building, basically <coughs> pros and cons of a centralized building. Um, and we will look for you know in discussion between ourselves, so we can have a unified decision um, amongst ourselves. And then we'll, we will respond to uh, Thanks, to your request. At which time, um, we would also um, put two other things on the table then for you guys. One, we would need a definite uh, position on whether or not you're going to issue the bonds if it's a separate building. We, and we do that at a board meeting. We don't anticipate things ahead of time. So. Well, so then, when's your next board meeting? Tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night. Okay. So I don't know if that's an not, agenda uh, item. Not we don't know enough. I can't put it on the agenda at this late in the game. We don't know enough anyway. We yeah, need there's not enough data. Yeah, we don't. I think you need to talk to us. Oh, we'll talk to the bond. And the the second the second item for you guys to consider would be if the library decides to go forward. As on our timeline, meaning not waiting for yours, that means this 10,000 square foot building that the public owns would be available for use for the public. So we need to know from a board, um, is it something that you would find use for the public or is it something that we would then um, retain and then lease out or, or do something so that we would have the ability to um, figure out what to do with the space. Because it is 10,000 additional square feet that you were looking to add on to your, I mean, you were basically looking to double. So here's a facility that the taxpayers have already paid for. Pretty cost efficient. Mr. Lowell, uh, two comments. Uh, before the board can act upon the bond itself, it's gonna have to meet all the requirements of the bonding attorney. So that question of coming to the board premature of the bonding attorney is not going to be acceptable. Uh, the second thing is I just wanted to mention for the, on behalf of the library employees, they did talk to Larry last week and the uh, township board is passing two resolutions tomorrow night. One of those uh, greatly affect the library and basically indicates that if the, uh, this resolution is not passed prior to the obtaining of your bond, you will not be reimbursed for any of those expenses, so this resolution will guarantee that you can be reimbursed uh, back to your general fund with any expenditures that you've already done prior to the issuance of the bonds. So, mm -hmm. just wanted to mention that. Mm -hmm. Which means any costs that you've laid out can be covered in your bond. You have the ability to put it against a future bond legally. Because mm -hmm. without this resolution being passed, you can't <coughs> legally attach those funds and sort of like pay yourself back. Mm -hmm. So we are supportive of the library. <laughs> are we adjourning? 
Yeah. yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. <coughs> Can we have a motion on this item?